All right, and we are live with the 22nd episode of the Game Session Podcast. I'm your host, Jose, slash Seth Rokage. This week, I am joined by Sarah, Blaine, and Mesa. How are the three of you doing? Hello. Hello. All right, I guess. It is no longer the ghost of Mesa. It is uh, Mesa Incarnate. <laughs> we, we, we've had... I th- what is it? Two or, th- two or three stories specifically I've been saving for you because I know either you're the most knowledgeable knowledgeable about it or you're the only one that gives a shit about Days Gone, like me. <laughs> I don't even play that. that game is beautiful, all right? I'll hear no I'll n- no no back talk about that. The I, biggest criticisms I've heard is that some of it seems narratively unfinished, but that doesn't make the game a bad game. It just makes you think of what it could have been. It I it's I feel weird about it. Like I'll, I guess we'll get into more later. But it's mm-hmm. not exactly great, but it's not bad, mm-hmm. but it's not good. It's like I enjoy it's, my time. It's just it's like yeah. the meaty. It's what I thought Ghost of Tsushima would be when I first saw it. Of uh, this mediocre, somewhat mediocre video game. Of just it's a video game, and the systems it, are of all video games, and I. But I still think the game was really fun, and I had video I really game ass video game. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I saw a very bad representation of it because I was at GDC like three, four years ago, and Sony had it playable to the public for like the first time. But they were running like a like a build that was a couple months old, and I just <laughs> I just was like, oh, I was like, this isn't too great, and I, I like walked away from my demo spot. I was like, I can't do it. I'm like, I just looked at the person behind me and I was like, I was like, you have a nice time, dude. Mm. And I, just, I was like, I yeah. can't. So I, so I saw like a very just, bad like, slice of it. <laughs> I just wish that, you know, maybe the studio um, behind the game could have like taken some other like Sony properties and then like and like siphoned it through and filtered oh, out. Oh, I guy fucking hate things. you, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the second you said siphon, I'm like, oh no. <laughs> uh, anyway, at the top of the sh- at the top of the show, I just I just want to go and remind everyone to like, comment, subscribe, and all the socials. Ooh. Everyone's ads are on screen. It's also going to be in descriptions. Uh, Game session podcast is filmed live at 6:30 p.m. on. On PSE, 6 30 p.m. PST on Sundays. That's You'll a like lie. to find it on podcasts. Yeah, we're sometimes a little late. <laughs> <laughs> Usually by 6 45 p.m., but you can find it later on podcast services as well as on YouTube as both full episodes and in individually cut up segments. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and jump into the show. Um, I guess if we want to get some of the heavier stuff out of the way first, Blaine. Uh, do you want to maybe um, steer the conversation in regards to uh, Six Days in Fallujah? Mm, yeah, yeah. Um, if you can, if you can bring up the article that we talked about while I do that, that'd be awesome. And yeah, let me get in chat. Get um, so a lot has been. I mean, since Six Days in Fallujah was reannounced, uh, it's been a big topic of conversation. Um, I think those conversations are very important. Anybody who has watched this show or follows me on any sort of social media knows me in almost any capacity, knows how I feel about modern modern warfare genre games and shooters, um, everything ranging from Call of Duty to Six Days in Fallujah, what it's proposed to be, um, and the fact that most of it is used as military propaganda. Um, this game has been shown very clearly to be more propaganda for propaganda's sake, under the guise of being like, well, we want to share the stories of uh, veterans who are there, and we're working with veterans on the narrative of the game. Um, while we could all go into heavy detail of criticizing the new gameplay trailer that came out and how stupid it is that a game that you're touting is super realistic representations of a real, real battle and a real, cri- a real conflict and crisis. Is is going to be procedurally generated missions and all these other all this other Michigas? I think it would be much better for us to um, point you in the direction of listening to the voices of people of Arab people and game dev and games communities in general. Um, I know uh, I, I forget his last name, but uh, Ram, Ra, Rami Rami. I hope I'm not mispronouncing his Rami name. Rami Ishmael, I believe. Yeah, he um, he had made a statement on some stuff. Um, recently he did like a short video and um 
uh, Rebecca Valentine wrote an article where she had actually talked to, I believe, Arab game devs and veterans uh, of the conflict itself about the issues. I would, I believe, Jose, did you put it in the chat? Already? I, I put the original one that Reb did on March, I think it was 19th, and then one that she, uh, she did a follow-up uh, yesterday, okay, yeah. I believe. Yeah, so I th if I'm uh, at the risk of messing up my facts, I believe the original was the veterans and the follow-up was Arab game devs and communicating with them. Um, either way, go look at those and just look more into those voices because I feel like they have the most... They're be I feel like... Uh, I feel like they have the most right to speak up about what's going on, aside from veterans who... Uh, in addition to veterans who speak up against what happened in Fallujah... Because as someone as a as a friend of mine who is a veteran of that conflict has said, we, we quote we weren't supposed to even be there. So, um, uh, that that being said, you know, just do more research and please try to not the 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 fun, the kind of funny meme you've seen going around. You are not a, you are not immune to propaganda is more than just a meme. It is a fact, and just try not to let yourself get swept up in propaganda because you think it might be the first good version of said thing. Right. I hope that wasn't like a big <clears throat> word salad. Oh no, you're, you're yeah, absolutely, absolutely coherent. Not. I think a lot of the uh, distinction, cause I've seen like some like typical asshats on Twitter, just like kind of uh, saying like, Oh, well, why are you talking about this versus like a call of duty? And yes, while there are issues with call of duty and like fucking jingoism and propaganda and whatnot, this is explicitly based on a real event mm -hmm. with real mm -hmm. stories and it's mm -hmm. uh, whitewashing and it's kind of wiping away some of those war crimes. What happened to the people that actually live there? I also um, think it's really reductive to say, well, how come no one complained about Call of Duty when people complain about Call of Duty a lot? It's yeah. not a thing that people it's not just me yelling about this shit and it's Absolutely. not just like privileged gamers. It's people who have been involved in things like that. Mm -hmm. Um if I if I may, um, uh, you know, I uh, I didn't have like a, a Xbox 360 or a PS3 when they were out, so I'm, I luckily was able to avoid most of this of that stuff. Um, I have a personal friend who's Muslim um, who talked about um, uh, when they first saw Modern Warfare, like the first one with their father when they went into a GameStop, and they saw this this all gameplay of them in a house with prayer mats with people shooting people who said who spoke in bad Arabic and that like disgusted them so much that they just basically left the store immediately. So I, I, I absolutely recognize, um, uh, how damaging a lot of this, a lot of this, uh, this imagery is. Or the fact that like these, these holes of these commitments to realism, quote unquote, that are proven false. This isn't even a mm -hmm. new thing with this recent thing. I mm -mm. believe, I believe it was Kumail Nanjiani who said, um, he would, he played Call of Duty and like recreationally and he played one of the games that had like a representation of a place either he grew up or he'd been. I, I don't want to misquote him, but a place that he was aware of. And he noticed that they were like, that like there were things named the wrong thing. Um, I know a game dev uh, associate of mine, uh, Alex Dirtbag boyfriend on TV, talked about um, when they would. I think their bro little brothers were playing um, Army of Two when that came out, and that first the first well, the prologue of that game is in Afghanistan. But like they were speaking a Lebanese dialect of uh, whatever language that is. Again, I don't want to misquote anything or missay anything. Um, but, and like, and, and like, there's shit like this all over Absolutely. the game sphere of, of like these modern war shooters. Um, I, I think you, you pointed out earlier, Blaine, just like Reb acts, not, I, sorry, misspeaking Reb absolutely put forth the effort to have like a extremely clear, coherent and educated look and everything, getting interviews from the people that this actually concerns. Mm -hmm. And, um, it, it I think it kind of sucks that. So she did, she did that initial article, I believe, on March 19th. I'd have to click on the link again right here. But uh, following that, IGN also had the exclusive gameplay reveal. Um, mm -hmm. And then they also had a um, an unfiltered uh, podcast episode. It's usually where they interview game devs, kind of see where their backgrounds are. But for this, uh, they basically gave an open mic to um, 
two of the key developers behind it to just mm-hmm. go ahead and um I don't even want to put it slightly it just went off of fucking spread propaganda left and right and uh there, there's some choice quotes I managed to get from here uh so in the interview uh P- Peter Tomte says it would be difficult to create an Iraqi uh civilian simulator that would sell millions of copies it's easier to do so from the perspective of an American soldier so mm-hmm. it's it's straight up money it's yeah, it always is and uh, w- one other interesting tidbit I, I wasn't aware of, but this is brought to the forefront. Uh, well, former games journalist, uh, current, I believe, junior writer at uh, Sony Santa Monica, Alana Pierce. She, w- she said in a tweet that uh, she was advised not to cover the issues with this game because it could threaten her visa status. And it sucks that, that uh, Raimi had to take on the onus himself, but she's glad that he did. Uh, video is an informative watch, as is the rest of the Twitter thread. I, w- I would recommend everyone go ahead and see what um, what Raimi has to say about it. But yeah, basically, people on visas, and uh, this doesn't necessarily have like exclusively do with games, but it, but with this, uh, it is you can get your visa revoked if you criticize this game because of its ties to the American military, mm-hmm. and that's fucked up. <laughs> It's a greater problem in this country in general of freedom of speech, you know, for all the people whinging and complaining that the right wing does about the freedom of speech being used against Christians, against homophobes and bigots and all these other things, or they're rather their freedom of speech being violated. The real violations of freedom of speech come more from people or if you if you criticize things too harshly and you're not a le- and you know you're a legal resident, you're not like a citizen of the country or whatever, like you can have that shit revoked. Um, I mean. People, people love to talk about, like, you know, oh, people getting pulled into vans in communist China and all these other things as, like, scary stories. And thank God we live in America when, like, during but the Black Lives Matter movement it. recently, the, mm-hmm. during the recent developments of the Black Lives Matter movement, people were just getting grabbed off the street and pulled into vans. And some of them, like, I didn't hear a lot of follow-ups on those stories to make sure if those people were okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, that shit happens here. Absolutely. And this shit is I mean, not I, exclusive to any of these other like you could, places. You could just you could just make like a shitty video on YouTube and you can get the homeland security knocking on your door. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's it's to 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 to, to act like um um ours is just less overt. It's 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 more passive, and when it's not more passive, it's a hell of a lot less passive. It's like we're not it's like we're not in 1984 like a lot of people want us to believe but mm-hmm. we are absolutely in we're absolutely in a pretty like much an, 1986. An <laughs> 1986. Um, <laughs> I, I don't want to say that I would you know what recommend I'm trying to say. Yeah. Of we're course. in something bad regardless is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say that I recommend people necessarily check out that unfiltered episode where those two devs are kind of going off on their thing but um, I did listen to the whole thing, and it was very evident from their backstory about how they um, wanted to get started with the idea that they were just completely die hard, just like fuck yeah, military on everything. And so when they come out with the with a stated goal of we're going to make like the most realistic war game, it's going to feel like what it was like to be there. And I don't want to uh, speak for a mutual friend of the show, um, but you will never be able to achieve the. Um, the horror that uh, people went through over there. You're not going to be able to do that in a game. You're not even going to be able to fucking get close. And uh, you, you can't exactly, you can't that. say that in a game where you get shot and you fucking wipe jelly off your face. That's, it's fucking, also, yeah. aren't they saying that in the games like in RTS? They're like, oh, we're making it the most realistic thing possible. It, they it's not an RTS. That. It was originally yeah. going to be kind of a survival horror. No, like, RTS so. Elements. Like, and so I it's... remember when the game was first announced, like, I remember seeing it in, like, gaming magazines when the last yeah. time I picked up a magazine. Like, I I remember that. And then I remember the backlash and then the, pro- not the producer, the publisher dropping it. And then That's the game just kind of happened. faded away. And yeah, then it that was back. like, we're not touching this now. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then it came back and then isn't it, did they change it from, so I didn't really look into this. I just saw it rear its head again. And I'm like, no. They made it more like Call of Duty. <laughs> And are okay. claiming that they're working with veterans to... Well, I know they claim that when it was on. first announced, too. Well, yeah, but now they're pushing it, like... Oh, like okay. with that gameplay trailer. They were, like, they had the veteran mm-hmm. speaking for, like, 80% of the trailer. And okay. they had... I I want to say they had, like, two different Arab men speak. 
at the end, or rather to Iraqi men, because I'm sorry, because not all, not all Iraqis so are bad. Arabs. I don't want to conflate those things. Sorry. That's so bad. Oh my god. <laughs> and the eyes, of, and, like, and, like in the eyes of the developer, it doesn't it doesn't matter, Blaine, to them. No, it's just because it doesn't matter to them doesn't mean I shouldn't think it matters. Uh, no, I've, I know. I've been corrected on that. Yeah, and it and it's like it's not like I like I definitely care about this. It just it makes me sick. It's disgusting to me. I don't under who who allowed this to come back. Who gave them the money to the like be like be yeah, like we're military. gonna was like oh we're gonna resurrect uh, this ten plus year old dead thing. Hey Sarah, you know how Call of Duty, even though it's basically been, it was went from living off one engine for like 10 to 15 years, and now it's just kind of still doing the same thing, but on a quote unquote new engine. And yeah. you know how like they keep getting money. Where do you think that money comes from? Oh no! Oh no! I'm aware. I Activision just gets a big like check from the United States government. Ten every time. Ten plus years, and you decide to bring this back. And you know what? Like, I am gonna actually. I'm sorry. This. Um, I, and if it's all cool with y'all, I feel like we should maybe end on this point, but, like, I I, I had someone try to come at me on my co- on my Twitter comments when I was talking with John about it. Well, I was, I was remarking on something John had said, because it's whatever, it's Twitter, we goof with each other, or we make points <laughs> with each other. And someone came at me with, like, when I said, yeah, well, I mean, both of the games have issues of being propaganda, but only one of the games, Call of Duty or... Uh, Six Days in Fallujah is based on like literally based on a real life time where a real life thing where America com- committed war crimes. And person came at me with, "Oh, you mean the Call of Duty that um, actually shows almost everyone as a bad person?" And Reagan, everyone freaked out about Reagan, even though he's like actually a bad guy. And all mm. I said to the guy was, "Where do you think that money comes from?" He kept fighting with me, and I blocked him because I went from like maybe you're in good faith to nah, fuck it. These games are have money pumped into them from military interests because whether it's the marines whether it's the united states military whether it's whichever branch whether it's the the dod whether it's cia like this money goes to these not for the purpose of making a better game and properly representing america it goes to them because they want you to believe that everything is okay it's the same reason that children are made to fucking say the Pledge of Allegiance or else they're ca- or else they're mocked in school by teachers or by students if they don't. It's why it's why you have recruitment officers at midnight launches of the newest Call of Duty. It's why you have them marketing it even though it's an M-rated game, it's why you have them It's why you had it's why you had recruiters in high school giving out that one um because there is a literally a video game specifically made mm-hmm. america's as army mm-hmm. america's army thank you they would give that out in high schools they gave it out at my high school when recruiters would come to teenagers mm-hmm. so this so this argument that this person brought up that i've seen other people bring up which is like well teens shouldn't be playing that game anyway and if you're stupid enough to not, if you're not, if you're an adult and you make a decision to join the army, that's one thing. But if you let a game tell you what to do, then you're stupid. When you're getting, when all this money is funneled into a project specifically to make that life and that and that idea appealing and heroic and all these other things, you can't fucking make that argument. Well, you're too stupid. No, because they were fucking lied to by propaganda, just mm-hmm. like you are. Whether you, even though you're too stupid to fucking admit it, and that's all Absolutely. I have left to say on this whole issue. The greatest thing. The greatest bone the the U.S. military ever received was teaching every child in America the name AC-130. Oh my god. Absolutely. Ugh. Yeah. Mesa, dig us out of this depression trench. Talk about Evo, unless that's also depressing. Eh, I mean, I there's, a lot, people, there's <laughs> a lot of people uh, uh, claiming that this is the death of the FTC. It's not. It's not so. Doesn't so what the death happened, of the FGC come like at least two times a year? Uh, essentially, yeah. Uh, the, sorry, the, 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 the last, the last big one was when Capcom banned Thuggery. Um, uh, um. So basically, what happened was, um, in a joint partnership with um some financial company that I've no, never heard of before, Sony bought um Evolution tournaments. Uh, it's the biggest fighting game tournament in the world. Happened. Well, Does Evolution to Tournament have anything to do with Evo by any chance? Uh, actually, that's a misconception. 
Uh, the, oh, really? I, I was just being an ass. They absolutely do. That is the same thing. Anyway. Oh. <laughs> um, Flipped it on you, Jose. You gotta Damn be it. careful. <laughs> yeah, God, um, God. Damn it. Um, so yeah, uh, Evolution is the biggest fighting game tournament that used to happen every year. Skipped last year because... <laughs> Because some not great stuff happened, uh, um, and um, and uh, it's it's um, yeah, it is the biggest premiere of the of the year for every fighting game that there's out. The, the every the company holds uh, basically a special year long string of tournaments that that culminates in a final tournament at the end of the year, and every single time, Evo tournament is the tournament that gives you the most amount of points. For that final tournament, it has been going on since like 2002, 2003, um, uh, and um, it's, it's 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 most famous because it um, uh, it, uh, it was started by uh, the Cannon Brothers, who are now currently working at Riot to make Project L, uh, the the whatever it's called, the League of Legends fighting game. Um. And so, so the reason why I personally think that Sony buying Evo um, isn't really that big of a deal is that uh, Sony, I don't think Sony would want to limit uh, the type of games that's played at Evo because that's the big fear. The big fear is that things like Killer Instinct, which is exclusive mm-hmm. to Xbox, or Smash Brothers, which is exclusive to Nintendo consoles, would be limited in its capacity at the at these tournaments. I really don't think so. Um, Do you think there would be any action on Nintendo's end? For Whoa, a week? so actually Nintendo put out that's a the, statement. It was kind of yeah. a lukewarm statement. Yeah, it, it it like like it basically said, "Oh, we are we are happy that that like what happened with like Evo is great. We will keep you updated on supporting our fighting games at Evo in the near future." That, that's basically what it mm-hmm. said. I guess yeah. I guess the reason why I brought up Nintendo is because they were so fickle even before Absolutely. this whole thing. Yeah. So. Yeah, they were the ones that did the whole like we're not going to authorize an online tournament because of the fact that mm-hmm. it uses uh, modding software we don't approve. However, mm-hmm. we can't stop anyone from doing physical, and then everyone was like, "So you really just want people to get Corona instead of approving this?" Okay, Nintendo. Well, mm-hmm. even before from like years Which... ago, they they just straight up didn't want their mm-hmm. games being like live streamed. Um, mm-hmm. or like, oh yeah, right? that was the big thing in what like yeah. 2015. Was when I still really think. Took uh, off. I think they're still think weird about that shit. Part of it is. I, I actually really because I remember the last time there was a major, um, like, uh, Smash Brothers wasn't uh, Nintendo tried to stop Smash Brothers from being played. There was a massive campaign, and they changed their tune relatively quickly. Um, I I'm gonna I'm gonna say I think that, I think that might have been Reggie, but I don't I, I have no idea because you know hey guess what Reggie's gone and all of a sudden yeah you know so. And let's not pretend Me- Reggie's also like a, a friend of the fans. He's oh, I'm not. I'm not mm-hmm. saying that. I'm not saying that is. I'm just saying that he probably recognizes that it's a stupid business decision to not let this thing happen. You're, you're yeah. saying Reggie isn't my personal best friend, Brian? <laughs> I'm saying he's not your uncle that works at Nintendo. Uh, mm-hmm. Mesa, if, like, so I, I'm not like that into competitive fighting. I watched the the like street fighter evo tournaments just because i thought it was mm-hmm. a lot of fun didn't yep. sony wasn't sony already one of the sponsors of evo yes. to begin with? sony is so a big was, sponsor so for like, many like, games at evo so this is just that. an ex- <laughs> this is essentially just an expansion and um Please. basically at the end of the day um what what's 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 the last letter of fgc mean community yeah it's a community if they don't like what evil becomes, they'll just leave. Mm-hmm. And so it's, it, it is unfortunate that, you know, the largest fighting game of the world, probably fighting game tournament of the world, you know, uh, would end in such a way. But, you know, if, if, if that, if that's how it be, that's how it be. Um, we have like places I- like CEO in, in Florida, um, and, um, and, you know, tournaments all over the, all over the, the country. Correct. Um, I actually you know. honestly don't see that happen because Sony seemed to be like, we're going to keep it yeah. the same. Again, they're, they're like, we're not think, changing anything. I don't think that this is going to be a negative, but even if it is, we would just leave. So I'm not, I'm not too worried about it. 
as a side point, correct me if I'm wrong. If a game is multi-platform, don't they typically always play on Sony consoles for whatever reason? I'm pretty reason? sure Not they do. Nor- I mean, it depends on depends on generation. So, like the official like the official console for Street Fighter Four was Xbox. Um, it was Xbox 360. Um, that that was the main platform that I was at every tournament. Um, but you know, Street Fighter Five exclusive to PlayStation it was held on PlayStation. Okay. Um, whatever Street Fighter Six may become, most likely will stay PlayStation just because it's an easier transition than switching back to Mortal Kombat Eleven held on PlayStation. Yes. Yeah. Right now, majority, next, not majority, all of them are held on PlayStation. Um, while like the 360 generation, that was on mostly 360. Um, mainly because um there was um some there's uh, some slight performance issues on PS3 that caused it to be not as smooth as 360. Um, uh, hopefully that 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 era of that type of difference is gone. Is there a second like Evo equivalent that people would jump to right away, or would would it be like something else starting from the ground up? Most likely, it'd be uh I think CEO is probably the biggest secondary right now. CEO is in Florida. It's in, um, used to be in, no, we used to be in Orlando, but now it's in Daytona, I think. Um, and it's run by Jabali. I know we have war in the North in New York, but I've heard Mm -hmm. middling to mediocre things about that. Um, from a friend, I have not been to it myself. A funny story. Mm -hmm. I was actually going to before COVID before everything else. I wanted to, I wanted to go to, um, I wanted to play. I mean, I bought uh, Modern, Modern Warfare. I bought Mortal Kombat 11 at launch. Um, was actually going to try and get into the competitive scene, um, and I just was not able to get my shit together for that that year. And then COVID mm-hmm. happened. So just any desire. I still want to get back into it, but like uh, the desire to really get in there and just go to tournaments and have fun and learn the har- learn the mm-hmm. hard way. Just New York also has. I could do. New York also has one of the biggest weekly tournaments. Um, uh, NLBC. I think I I think I either it? follow a Twitter account that promotes mm. those or something. What were you gonna say? Yeah. Is it? I know. I only know of one other fighting game tournament because I'm from Chicago and I have a lot of friends who I knew who were fighting game people who would go to this. Is it Frosty Fostings in Chicago or is that in Canada? I believe that's in Chicago. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, because yeah. I I had a bunch of friends who who would go to that. And they would always tell me how big it it, it was. Frosty Fosting is is um is definitely um relatively a relatively large one. Um, well, Canada, yeah, Canada has Canada Cup. Um, over here we have over here in California we have um um shoot I forgot the name of it um uh. I was nor it's 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 there's one in Sacramento. I was gonna go last year, but you know, the end times uh, happen. The end, the yeah, end time. the temporary. I'm happy end the time. end times look like they they might end soon though. So that's pretty good. The after um, the before times, the long long ago. I mean, I <laughs> yeah, don't so, yeah. I don't know. I'm just I'm just here to see Kim competitive strive when that starts up. Yeah, <laughs> hopefully, I'm just watch competitive hope, drive. I can't. Hopefully, I can't hopefully, get into hopefully. competitive guilty gear. I just can't do it. It's too much. To hell, Blade. Too, too flash. <laughs> hopefully, 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 um, final round in Atlanta comes back because that was the biggest early mm-hmm. year tournament, and it, it was it was it was really cool. And I hope that comes back, but you know is they that, had to cancel it last year announced? and it looked really bad. Isn't that where they announced Guilty Gear Strive? I swear they announced Strive at some at a fighting tournament. Was it at Evo? Was it Evo last year? No, two two years ago. I meant when they when they announced Strive. It might have been. I, 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 because they, I just know because they played that song first, and I yeah, and I just uh, remember I saw the trailer. I forget. Yeah, I forget where Smell of the Game first came out. But I just know, like, I mean, I. Like like you, Blade, I've been wanting to get into competitive strive. Me and my boyfriend play. And uh like I mean we, we play incredibly casual casually. Like I only play like one one character, but Guilty Gear to me has been one of the easiest fighting games that I've ever learned. And I say that like, oh, like I like it was easy to to learn, but it's the only fighting game I've ever played that I want to master, that I want to get like really, really good at. 
it's the meta that intimidates me about Guilty Gear. I've always been able to like, here's the care, here's a fast character that I like. Okay, cool. I just, I just can't figure out the meta. It's, it's like how in Skullgirls, I have fun <laughs> playing it, but I still can't figure out the meta of like multiple, t- like a team of three with assists versus Sh- one powered up character. Strive might be a good jumping in point. Yeah, for Strive you. is, Strive is being like from from people who have like played it like recently. They've mm-hmm. said that it's that it's really really easy to like. Yeah, Strive is a very yeah. simple footsies based gameplay that's um that 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 actually makes me want to play it because that's that's the type of style of game i like i don't really like the traditional anime fighters where it's a lot of you know uh combos and locking you in the corner i was in the closed beta for strive last year around april may i played it incredibly early but i had an absolute blast like it, it just felt super fluid it was hella fun, and people who were in the That's recent good. beta, Mesa, weren't you in the recent? Yeah, I was. Yeah, I basically yeah, yeah, I sat down, learned one combo, and won like eighty five percent of my matches. So <laughs> <laughs> nice. it's just like it's so much fun, and it's so like loud and in your face, and it's such like mm-hmm. a rock and roll style thing. That honestly, Robo-Key that's what stands it. out for me, huh? I want to know if Robo Key is in it. I don't know. They haven't revealed that. Yeah. <laughs> they haven't revealed that. I played as him once else. and I was like, this is my main. And then I fucking played newer ones and I was like, oh, he's oh, he's not in yeah. it anymore. Okay. Let's, There's uh, a lot of characters that never come back. <laughs> let, let's uh, jump into some uh, not great news. Uh, the outlet The Gamers reported that the PlayStation 3, PSP, and Vita digital storefronts are permanently going to be removed beginning July 2nd and with the Vita store closing on August 27th. An official announcement for the closures is expected to come at some point at the end of the month. And it would appear, unlike other scenarios where games are like delisted, such as uh, Tales from the Borderlands, which is actually coming back uh, sometime this year, I believe. It already came back. Oh, there we go. But unlike in that scenario where games are delisted, uh, users are going to be completely unable to re-download games that they own licenses for. Okay, um, that is so- strange. So this poses a unique issue for Sony because unlike their direct competitor, Microsoft, they don't have an optimal means of accessing previous generations content past the PlayStation 4. PlayStation 3 titles are playable via the streaming service PlayStation Now, but that also has its own wave of issues such as uh, input lag, data caps, and outright outright just lacking the fast internet up fast enough internet speeds to get it going in the first place. Mm -hmm. And a lot of that is um, centrally due to the PlayStation 3 cell processor, which has just been a giant headache in that generation in of itself, and especially makes things harder to uh, port over or to allow for emulation. Um, So this is kind of unprecedented within the gaming sphere that at like at this big of a level where you're just not able to read download your older stuff as well as just like the the store going down as well if you didn't own stuff before mm-hmm. uh so it kind of brings in a question a little bit and we can get into this later like point by point but it brings in a question the viability of shifting away from physical media and fully embracing the supposed digital future that i advocate for <laughs> um but then that in that scenario physical media is no stranger to its own series of woes including inflation theft and damage but it's also worth noting that even relying purely on physical reinstallations of games like if you're just constantly uninstalling reinstalling you're still going to be left high and dry in terms of receiving patches updates and downloadable content since you won't have access to that that's actually something i was going to bring up because uh and this may shock some people to hear me say this but to mirror uh something my friend ian had said i think on the podcast he's on is that you know while physical in a lot of ways when you go older when you when the older you go with physical you know you do have at least everything on that disc From the PS4, Xbox One generation and on, that's not really the case. And even so, like you brought up, Jose, you know, like people say physical is forever. Yes and no. Um, Cartridges, discs rot. Cartridges oxidize and have to either have the heads cleaned or just flat out don't work anymore. Um, Absolutely. There's not more of these cartridges being made, so you know, you, like I remember the uh, the Mario Duck Hunt like coffee table was going around on the internet for a while. Those are things, you know, not to say like I'm not shaming anybody for that, but just those that is a limited resource that was used to make that that you will not get back. So, um, this. Do you mind if I go off on a topic, Jose, or did you have more you wanted to add? Um, if you 
Let me just go in and finish this up, then I'll go in and toss yeah. over to you. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah, yeah. and then and then I want to bring something up after Blaine that's totally niche on this on this topic, but totally actually <laughs> works here. <laughs> Let's see. I'm so gonna be just fucking Dayton Sims, just go. <laughs> so uh, just to finish up uh, what I wrote here, uh, Sony is by no means facing financial turmoil, as evident by the rampant success the company has seen through the entirety of the last generation, as well as with the launch of the PlayStation Five. Mm. Uh, closing the stores for older hardware has the indisputable benefit of saving Sony money but it's also an undeniable loss for users. Uh, the best course of action for users to take is to download any and all games they want to preserve to their hard drives with higher capacity drives, such as the, I believe you can use up to a one terabyte uh, 2.5 drive on a PS3. Anything higher than that, it tends to uh, act up a little bit. But so storing your, storing your data on that and also having a backup in case your initial hard drive goes out, um, that'd be the best way to preserve your stuff. It's also highly advisable that those wishing to hold on to their Vita libraries to grab the system's proprietary memory cards before they're gone, uh, before so uh, those, those before those get held. Yeah, they're already expensive as is, <laughs> but especially but especially but especially before scalpers uh, swoop in on them and then hold them at even higher prices. Uh, the potential damage caused by these closures isn't just limited to games natively made for the associated platforms, as they're uh, blah blah blah. Uh, but they're also incredibly good um, PlayStation 1 emulator machines. So they, they're they all able to access, like, entire... I, I think there's something weird on the Vita. You can't play the fucking original Crash Bandicoot or Spyro games. So that, that that's aside from the problem. But they, they have access to this entire backlog of PlayStation 1 games. And so you by taking down these... You can't crisis on it. <laughs> So by so by taking down uh, these stores, uh, Sony is actively destroying their own attempts at uh, preserving their own history and relegating the easiest method of accessing their libraries to third-party emulators on PC. I and I I added this last part to be a little sassy asshole, uh, but that last piece comes as a bit of a ironic juxtaposition. Uh, when Astro's Playroom exists, which entirely relies on the central premise of nostalgia and pride in the company's history. Uh, Blaine, did you want to go ahead and go ahead? Um, it, Sarah, how long is your th thing? Because mine's going to be kind of a whole kind of going to want to walk through the woods kind of deal. How, what, uh, is yours just like a, a point that you want to make? Yeah, so um, obviously for those uh, who don't know me, which would be baffled if you did it, I play a lot of dating sims, and as of recently, the Switch has become the new, like, Atome machine, because it's very hard to get Atome dating sims here in America, but the Switch has become that system. Well, before the Switch was that system, the Vita was that system. And before as of right now, PSP, I believe. Uh, yes, for some of, for only, only in Japan, it was the Vita yeah. that they were releasing here in America. But because of that, there's a lot of players who they don't play many video games, they only play uh, Atomes, so they own just a Vita. And they use all their monies to all their monies. They use all their yeah, money to word. get money. Money is a they, real word. <laughs> they use all their monies to get at atomes for the Vita, but some can't buy them physically. They have to buy them off the PlayStation Store. Mm -hmm. They're basically not going to be able to use their only console anymore after this, and will be forced to shell out if they want to, like three hundred and ninety nine dollars to get, or two or two ninety nine if they get a Switch Lite to have to buy a new system just to play the only uh, type of games that they play. Mm -hmm. And I think that's incredibly stupid because a Vita was how I started playing a Tomes. I, which I mean, I can't talk because I have a Vita t uh, t TV, but that thing's going to be obsolete if this happens. That thing's just going to be a box. No, well, I mean, if, as, if you can download your stuff and buy it, but aside from that, you're, you're only going to be able to play what you have. Yeah, um, so it's like it sucks because these niche people who like these like this niche type of game, they're pretty much shit out of luck when this happens. And it just like it sucks, especially for me as I, as I'm part of a face face uh Facebook group, seeing all of them getting super hyped when they get a new Vita uh uh Tome in or when they buy a new Vita one on on their Vita, I, like it, it it just now makes me sad. <laughs> I think Blaine. I think Blaine has a very interesting perspective on this, and in that she had just received. Um, I, I guess my my old Vita back in. When did you get it? Back in January. Yeah, something like that. Something like January that. January or February or something. 
Yeah, so you just got access to this to this incredible library of games, whether it's the PSP, the Vita, and especially it's a damn good PS One machine. Yeah, and and then this just this news comes out. This has got to be like such a gigantic fucking slap to the face. It's not the worst thing because at least I can get um some Vita games physical. Um, mm. but that being said, or at least the ones that I'm concerned about. But that being said, um. I'm just trying to think of where I want to start with this because this is going to be a kind of I just go all over the place with this topic because I have to. Um, I mean, I don't think the biggest problem is so much that the stores are being taken down or closing because this would have if it made it to November, this would have been the 15th year that the PS3 storefront would be going. Um, that's a good run. Uh, the Vita store, I I don't know off the top of my head. But whatever, a decent amount of time. Um, I believe it came out 2012. Okay, so eight, nine years, depending. You know, it's still a decent amount of time. Not Probably not as long as it should have been, but still decent. The problem is the fact that, you know, we're not finding this out from an official announcement. We're finding this out... We're finding this out from mm. a rumor, essentially. A cred- or a credible rumor. And something we all knew was going to happen, we were all kind of guessing was going to happen since they changed, last year they changed the, uh, the the website's functionality where you could only purchase PS4, or PS5, and that's it, as opposed to PS, PS1 Classic, PS2 Classic, on multiple systems, PS3, PS4, soon to be PS5 once that got announced. Um, um, to elaborate on that real quick, it was specifically so you couldn't buy PS3 uh, PSP and Vita games from like on, on a desktop or phone. You couldn't buy it from yes. their website. You had to buy it directly from the hardware store. However, you could not hardware store a... like fucking Dale's or whatever. No, the exactly. store on the hardware. You could go into via another link to access Hello? that. You still can. Sir, where is your uh, ladders and PlayStation threes at? Please? I, oh my god. <laughs> um, but but that being said, you know, like we're not only finding this not from an official thing, but we're finding this out from an unofficial source, like what about two months give or take before this is supposed to all go down and maybe three months when the announcement first came out like the fact that you're giving people no time to prepare for this the fact that like i'm willing to bet honestly that if this information hadn't come out maybe no one would have even found out about it they would have just done it which you can say oh no they wouldn't do that because the backlash would be crazy i'm like yeah but they also would look at it as, well, we're not making much money off of it now, and that's not going to make people stop buying video games from us in the future. Mm-hmm. So it's a risk we're willing to take uh, for two, a service that we don't want to deal with anymore. Two quick points on that. Sony has not come out and said anything against this whatsoever, like not even trying to do like the PR denial. Exactly. Um, and then the other point was... Um, fuck, I forgot. <laughs> was it the Jim Ryan quote? Uh, no, that wasn't that. Um, oh, now I remember. Um, so, like, yes, these these stores have been around for forever, and, like, admittedly, yes, the people actively using, like, the PS3 stores to buy games or to re-download their stuff, it's, it's not as big as, like, what's on PlayStation 4, not as big as what's on PlayStation 5. And I would, like, super buy this argument. I'm not, I'm not necessarily saying that you're making the argument. This is, just, like, the royal argument, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um... That like oh they're it's a poor company they're struggling that they that they need these extra resources they had the most fucking f- financial success and uh, I think I have an article here somewhere but uh, like 2019 was the most uh, financially successful year that they had maybe it's not 2019 I I, I'd, have to, I'd have to look at it, but but basically the point is Sony is doing incredibly fucking well specifically thanks to PlayStation and so. Uh, what, whatever it costs to keep the servers running, it, it is. I would imagine it's minuscule in, in the uh, grander scheme of things. Well, what's even um, crazier? Um, especially oh, in... On, um, I'm sorry, go ahead. Or Jose, whatever. Or, or, I guess, whatever. I'm sorry, I'll just elaborate on it real quick. Mm-hmm. Um, where did I put my stuff? Oh. I'm sorry, you, you go ahead real quick, Mace. I want to find the quote. Yeah, I, I, I think, I think uh, probably an important conversation I think people aren't really having, though is um what uh, is the um the environmental impact of running these servers that barely anybody's using mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i feel I think, like um i feel I like that's, that's that can also make a make a major point into you know either shutting these servers down or switching them 
to 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 something that people will actually access because you know we uh, ps3 the um, psp vita you know they're very um they're, they're sure there are a lot of there are sure are a lot of people that that still use the consoles but mm. you know there's a certain point where we kind of have to you know look at the the, the cost benefit analysis and and understand that you know it, it might be time to 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 move on a little bit. And yeah, I don't and disagree I, with that at all. I yeah, and and at the face but value of it, they, I don't. I'm sorry. Yeah, I just, I just want to say, but if they don't say anything that yeah. I have, I I don't understand that. <laughs> yeah. like, for me, for me, the way I well, I I completely agree with that. I look at it more as the preserving old playstation one games aspect of it absolutely as, mm-hmm. as someone who collects mm-hmm. i mean i have been able to collect in a in a while but in my early teens i somehow got my parents to buy me like old playstation one games like old horror games parasite eve dino crisis all the old resident evils because those are considered gems now like you can't get those anymore the the, the ps1 classics on the playstation store on the ps3 were some of the only ways to play those games Mm-hmm. If you couldn't get a use a physical copy, because physical copies of those games could vary from like sixty dollars to like fucking four four hundred dollars. So I think also you would you you could get I think the Fatal Frames and the Rule of Rose game on PS2 Classics as well. So like they were Not pretty Rule much of, ways. I'll do, I'll check that, but I don't believe it, Rule of Rose it, is available. It was on either PS2 it Classics. was either Rule of Rose or Haunting Grounds. It I'll was one check. of those two. I swear you could. I mean, maybe I'm wrong, but I swear that it was no, one no, of those no, that you could it. a classic. But like, um, y- you just you just can't get those now anymore. If this goes through, which means a bunch of people who wanted to try these games without shelling out the bajillions amounts of money to buy one the console that could play it and two the game itself, it, like we're we're just losing all of this his- history, and it sucks. <laughs> like like yes, destroying the environment sucks more, and I totally understand that. I'm not saying that you're wrong. But like, mm-hmm. also just just the idea that we're losing all this history to now people on eBay boosting the prices of these mm-hmm. games up mm-hmm. just because you can't buy them for ten for ten dollars any anymore. Going back to the um, the cost benefit uh, argument, like yes, at face value, it absolutely um, stands to reason why they would do that. But you look at their direct competitor, Xbox, where the overwhelming majority of not just the previous generation but the 360 generation and an original Xbox that they're there's like not paid updates this is just free stuff that there's that they're supporting them on current hardware you can they're all available digitally they're adding fps boosts they're adding auto hdr like they're going like leagues and leagues above to make like already existing libraries uh not just not just available but also actively making them better than what they were originally and then sony is just standing here just like we're going to delete our history we're going to delete our preservation yeah. efforts. But yeah, but you know, the, the, the Xbox and the Xbox 360 that's available on the Microsoft store is a fraction of what those consoles mm-hmm. had. That's all um, true. Um, and then uh, what regard? I absolutely agree. I absolutely agree that Sony should have put um, backwards compatibility as a priority for the PS5. I think, I think, um, I think, I think ideal scenario, if if they were going to make this announcement and then they were going to say, but we're bringing backwards compatibility and the PS1 store to PS5, I'd be like, okay, that's infinitely better. Or even well, if they had just said, we're having a fire sale, you know, for the next up until it goes under, just buy what you want, buy what you can, it'll all be discounted specifically on those consoles. And then after that, it goes away forever, but you know, you're I- able to get at least what you want. I still believe there's also um, limitations on the PS3 and other consoles that would limit how well it can play once the servers go down. Oh, absolutely. Um, even, 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 even if you keep it offline, I believe there are limitations that'll, that'll, that like after like a few after like a few years or something, it'll it, it won't be able to play those games anymore. I feel like one um, thing that people don't bring up and like. Um... It's so like, yes, like if a flash sale were to happen, I would absolutely go out and buy some stuff I just haven't gotten for whatever reason. But what about uh, some kid 10 years from now says, hey, I want to go back to the PS1 library. Is there a convenient way that I can go through it? Uh, sorry, you were born two, uh, 10 years too late. You weren't there when the flash sale happened. And 
it, it just so for so for people that are like in the now right now, good for us. But down the line, it's just that no luck right. for them. I think that's True. just um. I, well, yeah, Mace. I think you're gonna say what I was about to say anyway. I think this is just a um. I think that we need to talk about like hey. Uh, like emulation is important, and uh, and like online, uh, online um servers and access to those games do exist and are relatively well maintained. Um, also, just nothing lasts forever. Like, I mean, I know it's and, gonna sound yep, surprising that I'm taking that, that side too. of this. That too, as well. Literally, nothing lasts forever. <clears throat> My love um, for you it, exists forever. It's unfortunate, it, and it sucks. And there's, and we also have to, you also, have, you know, at a certain point, as time goes on, the desire to play these games also significantly drops. In ten years, you're gonna, you're gonna be a weird kid in ten years to want to play a PS One game. You know, like that's true to a degree. But <laughs> I feel, and if this, if I can use this to segue what into my other thing? point. Yeah. Excuse you, Mesa, as someone who's no. looking for a very rare PlayStation One game right now. Hey, you. I said a kid in ten years. You're not a kid in ten years. I will be. Oh I, I mean, I mean, hold on. I mean, even take it from like a like let's let's say someone's like only a Sony gamer, like they don't have the money to buy an Xbox or whatever. If they if the um, they want to go back and like download some digital PS3 games, they can't. Uh, like let's say they mm. th- like PS Now just as an option because it's. Uh, realistically not an option for a lot of people uh, you still can't access that on Xbox you have backwards compatibility on there like I, I was talking to someone today I believe um, I don't even when I when I go to play like an older game on Steam I don't even fucking think of it as a generation it just fucking works I'll, I'll pop open Fallout uh, New Vegas I'll pop open um, Resident Evil 4 that's a fucking 6th generation game well, yeah well, I'm just like it, it just works. What if I want to play all three of the Resistance games? Damn it! Oh, and they're not they, keep fuck- they keep fucking. They keep fucking. Sarah, Sarah, Sarah for that. wait, wait, Sarah. They keep fucking teasing that on and Twitter, and I'm ever. Me, please, yeah. and I yes. hate it. I, I think. Yeah. I think something we need to look at is. It, it, I I agree with pretty much almost almost everything Mesa said, and I think a bigger thing to look at is not so much why we need to keep this store open, but more to what Jose was saying, why we need to acknowledge that Sony could actually make this work in the best of both worlds and chooses not to. Um, Exa- it's, yes. a known, it's a known fact. It's a known fact that the PS4 has the ability to run at the very least PlayStation 2 games because they sell PlayStation PlayStation 2 games on their storefront. You can buy them I right believe, there. I believe um, people have said that that is the best PlayStation 2 emulator, period. It is. That's the one that they they have internally. But they won't unlock the ability to play the discs on the console because they want you to buy it from their store. Even Mm -hmm. though it's like 10 games. Well, I think Um, a lot of uh, of the truth of it, you had mentioned it earlier, um, this stuff isn't going to happen when the head of PlayStation doesn't give a fuck about older games. No, it's literally. that it's um, that Jim Ryan quote. I I, I forget what mm-hmm. game specifically someone was playing. Says uh, like, it was, oh that yeah, it was Grand or, Turismo. Was Grand Turismo, sorry, Ridge Racer, Gran Turismo, yeah. Yeah, he went past it. He said, like, ew, this looks like shit. Why would well, he didn't say it looks like shit, but it looks old. Why would anyone want to play play this? It looks ancient. Mm-hmm. And just like well, when you don't have someone at the top believing in this, it's not gonna happen. When you have someone like absolutely. um like Phil Spencer yeah. who actively gives a shit about this stuff, you, you see stuff happen. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Well, and you have the also the problems now of, you know, like, we know that they can play, run PlayStation 2 games on that console if they want, because they do. They just won't let you run the discs. Chances are you could also probably run these PlayStation 1 games on there if they wanted to make it work. You probably could. I'm going to mm-hmm. argue the same thing for the PS5, honestly. But the the whole situation then comes to... With these stores closing and them not working these things out, I think even more so from the fact of like like to go into more what Sarah was saying about the PS1 games that we're losing that have like these high values is you're gonna go from being able to buy like Dino Crisis and these other games for five ninety nine, four ninety nine, nine ninety nine, nineteen ninety nine, maybe even twenty nine ninety nine to giant figures. So what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna play a game that I've played oh, before with you. Oh my y'all. god! Wait, can I just Ooh, I just I bring up games. one thing really really fast? 
Yes, I consider and myself is, a bit of a gamer. As someone who has a tab open, finding out how I can pirate and play Cold Cold Delka because I can't afford a six hundred ninety nine PlayStation allegedly. copy of it. Allegedly, allegedly. Uh, listen, guys, this shit's easy. I'm not saying to pirate games because it's very bad, but as someone who pirated the Trauma Center, uh, I, I just, I just listen, guys. <laughs> okay, it's not. It's not bad. But, like, I know this sucks, but learning to do this stuff is really easy. I, once again, had my significant other talk me through how to use Dolphin, because I'm dumb and have no idea. So, like, I get it. I don't want this to happen, but if it does happen, don't panic. There's ways to play, to, to like, play this, mm-hmm. like, play this stuff. You don't need to pay $699 for a copy of this weird PS1 game that was on six mm-hmm. goddamn discs. Because I just found a nice little word draft that shows you how to do it with with even yeah. pictures, so it's even better. <laughs> yeah, my personal yeah, rule has always text. been my personal rule has always been if you cannot purchase it in a way that gives yes. the developer yes. and publisher money, then it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah. <laughs> also, that, I am just that be or real if something too. is too ex- something if, it, if something is too expensive that you cannot reasonably afford it but people have translated it and or found a way to make it playable through different means go ahead i mean i i'm just i i, I think if you have the means you should purchase a game especially if depending mm-hmm. if it's like a small, a small developer yes, but oh i God, also yeah. think i also just don't believe in this idea that automatic pirating games automatically is the bad thing um absolutely you know, people say mm-hmm. like oh well, it's it hurts the bottom line and blah blah, blah. and it's like okay but then we still it's not the reason why things are so fucked up in the industry. Things are fucked up in the industry for other reasons we've gotten into. Um, I don't think they're necessarily said, mutually exclusive, but yeah, I get your point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, no, yeah. You, I could think of a better way to say it if I had a little more time, mm-hmm. but I want y'all to, to guess how much a complete um, copy of God Hand costs. Yes, we've done this before, but the <laughs> answer has changed. Oh and my god. Oh I my have god. more Hell here. Yeah. Hell yeah. Please, for the love of God, find a way to play God God Hand. It may not be fun, but that's it important. is. It is on PlayStation 3 PS2 Classics for $19.99 right now, I believe. Either $9.99 or $19.99. I want every, all of you quickly to guess how much a complete... Uh, complete means case and disc. And I guess... $225. $225. $80. Jose is wrong. What did you say, Sarah? 325. You're also wrong. Uh, yeah. Mason. <laughs> I'm gonna say I'm gonna I'm gonna go a clean Not six. Not new. Complete. A clean six. Six hundred. Okay, you're all wrong. Um <laughs> yeah. who's, who's, is, who's the closest? Complete is $108.91. It actually, the last time I checked this, it was Ooh. hovering around $80 God to 88 is- God, so it's $108. $108 for complete. Copies. There's not Wait. many copies out there that it's only 108 Wait, so who Loose, won? That's good. Loose was it me or Mason? Uh, you all went over, so nobody won. Um, yeah. uh, Loose uh, price boo. is $68, but I'm not going to do this for every one of these. And new price is $199.99. Oh my with God. With two, two sales in the last, I guess, in the last month. So for take God that as you will. Okay. For next. God, <laughs> So Sarah, you know how Dino Crisis is like five ninety nine on the yes. PlayStation Shop. Okay, yes. all of you guess how much a complete copy of that is. One hundred and fifty dollars. I'm just kidding. Y'all, y'all are y'all are okay. Well, let me rephrase this. Not new, <laughs> not mint. Complete. Yeah, as in it, it has a jewel case. It has a disc, and it has a has a has a eighty five dollars. A hundred and fifty and one hundred and fifty bucks. You are both too high, Jose. One dollar. <laughs> I win. Okay, Jose <laughs> technically wins. Um, it's thirty seven ninety nine complete. Loose yeah, is twenty two seventy seven, and new is one hundred and twenty two dollars and fifty cents. Now the thing is that again, this is like five ninety nine on the yeah, it's literally five ninety nine. That's less than the price of just the disc. Dino Crisis two. This one's actually a little bit higher, but I want you. I want to hear what y'all think. Complete price. Let's do this. One hundred and twenty. Oh. No, still over. Sixty oh, bucks. God damn it. Uh, brand new, no, baby. but closer. Oh no, not brand new, not brand new, complete. No, no, I meant, I meant, I meant a, a brand new. Which I guess that's seventy dollars now. Never mind. I meant you're brand new. But I'm gonna yeah, take 60. your. I'm gonna take your seventy. I'm gonna take your seventy. All right, because you said that last. Jose, what do Damn. you think? Don't say one dollar. <laughs> Two dollars. Don't be that jerk, Jose. Don't cheat. <laughs> uh, fifty dollars. 
Okay, so it was 84 84. <laughs> yes it's it's quite it's i mean we've talked about how it's arguably the better one but they're both good for different reasons um new price new brand new is 169.31 loose is 41 dollars and 10 cents just the disc 41 dollars and 10 cents but you can get it for 5.99 on the playstation store resident evil not the director's cut but the original oh, version oh, complete uh, price 55 dollars nope too high or too too low? Too low. Um, oh Jose, one hundred and one dollars. Oh my god, you asshole! No, <laughs> you went over this time. <laughs> yeah, eighty-five, baby, eighty-five. Okay, you both went over. Um, it was seventy dollars complete. I was over that, that much. It was, was with shipping. It was with shipping, right? Stop it. <laughs> Twenty nine ninety seven for loose, just the disc. Brand new, one hundred and fifty one dollars. You, you okay? Grading is stupid because it is. Don't graded grading. Thirty eight hundred dollars and one cent. Oh my I don't, god! I don't, that is crazy. Um. Okay, so Resident Evil Director's Cut, complete price. Oh, the Director's Cut had the had the one point five demo in it. I don't know if this has the 1.5 demo in okay. it. This is, just says direct because if, it, because if it has the one, if I remember correctly, if it has the 1.5 demo in it, or wait, no, that was in the first Dino Crisis. Uh, just assume um, it doesn't have it. Assume okay. it doesn't have it. Uh, Seventy-five dollars. Nope. God, too high. <laughs> that was too high. Oh, probably too Hers high was, because the Sarah's answer was too high. So Wait, what'd you say? Uh, the after they started publishing the director's cut, they stopped publishing the original. Yeah. So Here, I'll, original Sarah, I'll give you another crack at it since you were since you went too high that again that time. Uh, sixty bucks. Closer. Um, Jose. Fifty. <laughs> Mesa. <laughs> Wait, fifty one. Uh, no, 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 no! I didn't say <laughs> no, whether you were no, right or wrong. No, you already gave your answer. Mm. Oh, 45, I guess. I'll go 45. Okay, so uh I'm I should say, oh well Jose went over, but forty nine ninety nine. I I it's basically fifty dollars. <laughs> no! Um, no, 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 that's 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 a penny. That's okay, a penny. Okay, so, okay, a penny. so then Mesa technically won that one with penny 45. Over here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Loose is fifteen dollars, which is about what I would expect. Um new is eighty one fifteen. That 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 one I believe is nine ninety nine on uh on the PlayStation Store. I don't think you can even get the original version of that on the PlayStation Store. Not that you would need to, because the director's cut is just the same game with more. Um, wait, wait, Blaine. I want you to, to I, I want you to look up something for me and and have every everybody else guess it. I know how much it is by itself. What's the, what's, what's the disc? My game, the game? copy of Resident Evil Two. Oh my god. Okay. That, that that's not part of this game, but I will entertain you. Gentlemen. I, enjo gentlemen, I enjoy I my financial you. responsibility. I show you my GameCom copy of Resident Evil 2. Uh, I would like you to uh, it is take a, a gander. Sarah, are you sh 75. Sure you know how Huh? You want to know what's funnier than 24 minutes? This guy said, are you sure you know how much it is? Because it's not very high. Uh, 25? 25. <laughs> okay, so based on what was your answer? Because I you said 25? Oh, no, think, that was, that's I, me. I, I guess I did. I, I honestly don't remember, but I, you know, I, that's my final answer, Regis. Okay. Uh, you know, what's your answer? 26. Okay, okay. Uh, Sarah, how much <laughs> did you think it was? When I got this, I, I was told it was the most expensive thing in the collection, and the collection has a lot of really expensive shit in it. Okay. It might have it you... might, it gone down, though. Are you sure you're not thinking of the Saturn one? Uh, no, I am thinking of the Saturn one. Thank you. <sighs> yeah, because the Sorry. Gamescom version the right. Gamecom version is $16.18 complete. <laughs> what? Saturn wow. is something else. Okay. That's and that's also not okay. Resident Evil Two. That's Resident Evil Director's no, Cut. One on more, Saturn. one more, gentle, gentlemen. All right, one more. Then we got to move on. Well, this no, because oh, I have okay. I didn't even get through all my freaking examples though. Sorry, go. And go Sarah's ahead. bringing up new examples. All right, Fatal Frame on PS2. Oh, baby! 
I'm not even gonna answer this one because I we gotta go quickly. We gotta go quickly through this one because I don't want to tie Jose up. Fifty. Okay, go on. Mesa, what? Forty-two. Okay, thirty-eight dollars complete. New is forty-two, so you Mesa, you kind of half win that one, and loose is twenty-nine oh two. Hell yeah! Damn. Okay, tactics ogre. Let's cling together on PSP. This one's not astronomical, but it is on for nine ninety-nine on the uh, Vita shop. Uh, sixty. Okay, no. Twenty-five. I was gonna say twenty-five. Damn. Twenty-five. <laughs> what were you gonna say other than twenty-five, Mesa? Mm, <laughs> let's go. Let's go. Let's go thirty. Okay, it's twenty-five ninety-five complete. Yes. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm is, so upset. But it is nine ninety-nine on the Vita store. Wait, can I'm you repeat saying, that one more time, Blaine? That you're but can right, you say it like? Can you say it like SpongeBob? 25. <laughs> um, okay. okay. I'm saving two of these for last, but so we're going to go the, the Shin Megami Tensei Persona PSP version. Oh that port. God. Which How one? How much you think? A the, PSP? The, no, 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 no. Specifically the first Persona game. Okay. The PSP port of the first Persona mm. game. I'm going to guess $50. Wrong. Jose. Oh, what? <laughs> What was Sarah's guess? Fifty dollars. Fifty. She was, and low. I was, and I was wrong. Thirty-six. You say thirty-six? Yes. <laughs> you I said she was low. So oh. You're also wrong. Whoops. She, she said I was Mesa. low. Dude. I misheard. Oh. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say uh, seventy. One hundred and thirty-eight dollars and ninety-six cents. Oh Brand new God. is two hundred dollars. Loose is seventy-five dollars. <laughs> Okay, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment on the PlayStation 1. That you can get on the... Oh, and I don't know how much Persona 1 is worth on the shop. I'm assuming it's $9 or $19.99 or something. Um, Persona 2 Eternal Punishment on the PlayStation 1. That is the PlayStation uh, Classic, I believe, for $5.99 or $9.99 on the PlayStation 3 shop. How much do you think it is complete? $170. Too low. Jose. What, what was Sarah's guess? $170. $170. Hundred and twenty-five. You're also too low, Mesa. Two sixty. Okay, you're all. I mean, Mesa wins because he's closest without going over. Um, three hundred and four dollars and eighty-nine cents. I feel like I stepped up too. (laughs) Now, brand new is three hundred forty-seven. So honestly, you may as well just buy a brand new copy if you find both in the wild. Um, but yeah, that's that's. I always what? thought the Persona series started with three. What's what's this Persona one and two nonsense? No, no, no. yeah, yeah. Be- because Persona like two the was the good one. Oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! I'm I'm gonna slap the shit out of both of you. Okay, these last two. These are my big, my big. These are my kind of what the fucks because these are games that one I own, one I actually need to get on Vita now. Persona two Innocent Sin, the PlayStation Portable port. Of Persona 2 and the definitive version of this game. Complete. Mm-hmm. How much you think it is? $85. Too low. 104. Too low. Mm-hmm. Yep, I had a feeling. Um, mm-hmm. 300. <laughs> you went over. Jose technically wins. Uh, damn. Um, one, 15871 complete. Loose okay. 90, okay. new 181. Now, this is the big one. That's chill. One of the most critically, one of the most loved games. Survival horror titles of all time. You cannot. Th- this game is so hard to find. Was never remastered. Never put anywhere except for the PlayStation Three storefront for nine ninety nine. Silent Hill, the original Silent Hill. Ooh. How much complete in box do you think it is? It might be. I don't know whether to say it's lower than you'll think or higher than you think. Somewhere kind of nebulous. But. So it's what I think it is. Is what you're telling me. <laughs> More or less, I guess, yeah. Uh, I'm going to go with $65. Nope. And I'm not so, telling you, I'm not giving you hints this time. This one is... $69. Nope. I'll say 90 Mason. Okay, so you're all wrong. Loose, as in just the disc, nothing else. $83.61. I'm not surprised by that. The complete... The manual <laughs> case and disc, one hundred and eighty dollars and ninety five cents. I'm not yeah, surprised double, by baby. any of that. Double. And and I want to specify something: when you buy games on the PlayStation 
network store, you get a digital manual as well. Um, so, like, I would actually consider those complete, aside from just, like, you don't have a plastic jewel case and you don't have the physical book or the physical disc, but you have the game and you have a digital copy of the manual. And sometimes I believe they also have the uh, back of the game case on those, but I can't remember off the top of my head. Um, new, $294.06. I'm not surprised by any of that. So this is nine ninety nine on the <laughs> storefront. So my point with doing this is that other than just having some fun and jackassing around for a little bit, um, is that when we lose these storefronts, these prices are only going to go up from it. Because this is while they're mm-hmm. available on these storefronts. This is just yeah. going to go up from here. Mm-hmm. And it, it, it is kind of a shame that, you know, while it is true, like, yeah, no kids these days are probably going to be wanting to look these games up for much longer. At the same time, the fact that they are still so accessible and cheaply, I might add, that that's no longer going to be an option is kind of devastating, especially considering they could probably figure out a way to put these games on newer consoles in some capacity. All right. Uh, Mesa, since you're here, and I want to take advantage of the time that uh, you are here. Yeah, I like spending time with you, buddy. Um, Let's go ahead and talk about Avengers. Uh, So Square Nexus critically ill-received Marvel's Avengers announced via a blog post that a slew of new reworks are set to make their way into the title via an upcoming update, uh, including the completely baffling decision to slow down the level progression system after level 25. Uh, making an already grind intensive experience actively worse to participate in. So I gave up on playing Avengers. Oh, I, I'm sorry, I, Jose. Can I just interrupt you for one the last second? Yes. Uh, something I forgot to mention earlier on in the discussion. There's also two games that came out on the Vita this year. One came out in February. The other one, I think, still has to come out. Okay. Um, anyway, continue. Yeah. But uh, so I, I gave up on playing the Avengers. I really liked the opening hours there's a lot of attention to detail the presentation values are all there like everything about the avengers day when you're on the uh helicarrier or, or whatever the fuck it's called um mm-hmm. like it was just like a love letter to everyone that's enjoyed the mcu who's enjoyed the comics it was just wonderful to be there i really liked all the platforming sections i like the linear moments like in the early parts of the campaign which is i want to say like the first three four maybe even five hours it goes on for a while but the second it gets, it drops down into like the uh, destiny level structure, where it just drops you like into a field. And you're like, I don't know. Here's some side th- stuff you can do. You have to charge into the base. It's kind of tiered. Then you do a final fight, and just like constantly having to grind for more gear. And I'm just like, I don't enjoy like the base gameplay. I'm kind of just here for the forward momentum to get through the story. So when it didn't have that forward momentum to get through the story, because it just hit a freaking brick wall, I'm just like, I'm, I'm good. And so the fact that they're even slowing down the gameplay even more is just like, I, I have no reason to go back to this. I'll, I'll just watch like the cutscenes on YouTube, pretend it's like a freaking MCU animated movie. But uh, Mesa, you, you actually you finished it, didn't you? I'm, I've been finished. I enjoy it. I have um, one character that's at level 50, which is the max level. And just like, like two more that's at like level 25 right now, I think. Yeah, I've been playing the game, especially since they just put out the uh, PS5 patch. Yeah, I've been having fun with it. Nice. Um, what do you What do you think about these changes specifically? Like, did you run into any issues in the base game with it being too grindy? Um, not really. Um, uh, the, the uh, for me, like, I didn't really have any issues with the grind. Um. Uh, yeah, like, yeah. I just, didn't, I just didn't really have have problems like that with the game. Um, and so far as I've been playing it too, um, I haven't really seen, um, I haven't really seen that 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 the the uh the, the the XP drop though. I haven't really have a lot of, I haven't had, I haven't spent a lot of time with characters in that twenty five range, so. So maybe once I get there, I'll, I'll see it. But, you know, but is that so like far, on? Is that like on the higher end, like near level cap, or or what is the level cap? Fifty. Okay. So mm-hmm. just the halfway point. It's just kind of where it's gonna yeah. like hit a wall um, once this rolls out. Mm. Have you tried the PS5 upgrade by the chance? Yes. Yes, I've been playing it on the PS5 upgrade. What did uh, they? It's been fantastic. 
biggest it, change for me personally is it's essentially instant loading. I saw a comparison. It's, it was like before it was like a minute, minute and a half. Yeah. And now it's mm-hmm. just like two seconds. If that now it's like two or three seconds. Yeah. That's freaking insane. Uh, uh, how's it looking the, uh, visually and like uh, even performance? Visually and performance wise. So I've been playing in performance mode. So I'm playing it at the uh, uh, 60 and it's almost 4K and it boosts it up a little bit. Um, it's been it's been really solid for me. I haven't had any issues at all. I have played with a friend who was complaining that um, it dropped all the way to the bottom of its um, of its dynamic resolution mm-hmm. um, and stayed there for a long time. I personally haven't had that happen, um, but yeah, he uh, it happened to him. So I, I just want to keep it, keep it out there. Since you brought it up, I just want to like mm-hmm. specifically shout out um, dynamic resolution options in games because mm-hmm. I think they're, that and DLSS is just oh. such a dramatic freaking uh, lifesaver. It's actually it's um, actually even even better than that with the, 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 on PC because it has it has um, it's one of the only games I think this and recently Cyberpunk are the only games that have dynamic DLSS huh. where it keeps the same output resolution. But the input resolution gets to fluctuate based on frame rate. Mm-hmm. Uh, do you have any desire to like keep continuing to play? Because I know they just dropped. Um, I want to say they have Night, two Night Hawkeye Link. in the game. Yeah, they have Hawkeye and then they have Kate Bishop, who's basically <laughs> just Hawkeye, right? Yeah, yeah. Hawk. Yeah, Kate Bishop is Hawkeye, but it's like, but she basically has like trickster. Um, and she uh, has like a stinger and everything. The for- comic explanation for that is uh, Kate Bishop took over for Hawkeye while he was being another like, he was undercover or something in the comics. Mm-hmm. Um, both of, see, in the Hawkeye thing, this is the why I'm, this is the only thing I'm talking about during this whole conversation. Is <laughs> Yeah, um, I, I, I just popped off a of mute so I can discuss this too. Matt Fraction did a run of Hawkeye that is pretty self-contained. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's amazing if you if you if you enjoy superhero comics and you have any interest in Hawkeye the character at all. Even if you don't, I would say still check it out. Um, these characters are from that and are very clearly like they're trying to emulate their characterizations from the Matt Fraction run of the series. What depresses me is the fact that number one, when they built up to this, they didn't show that Hawkeye skin being like the focus. They were yeah. focusing on the really, I mean, the one that yeah. Henry Age, which is good, but is also just a boring design of a bald guy. He looks like Cole McGrath in fucking War Spandex. <laughs> <laughs> I have not heard that name in ages. Or he looks like the dude from Resistance, but in the second one when he had the weird black armor, like the special ops. You're, armor. you're confusing me with all these bald uh, white protagonists. <laughs> There's so many. Um, and Kate Bishop, you know, is, is a really cool character, but something I've re- I've come to realize is like how, you know, Mesa just said, it's like, yeah, there's the, to anyone who's not familiar with that specific run of Hawkeye, you're just going, so there's two Hawkeyes in this game. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, I mean even if it, you are, even if you are familiar, it's still just two Hawkeyes. The first characters that they added to the game are two Hawkeyes. <laughs> and what I found out that Spider-Man isn't even like st- there yet. I actually was like, holy shit, they didn't have him in it yeah. like launch. Like, I'm, it fine with it. Thing. I'm pretty I'm sure fine they with said it, but... it's because of COVID or something that oh, yeah. Spider-Man has been like super pushed back. Oh yeah. I, I would have imagined they would have at least pushed Spider-Man in between, like reallocated their resources to that. Because now Cause, like, it's like it's just, just back yeah. to back. Here's one hawkeye and there's like they they got hurt with COVID really hard. Oh my god! Like this just, update was supposed to come out when the uh, when the when the when the Xbox uh when the Xbox and the PlayStation Five came out. So like yeah, I just had the worst idea. Which yeah, makes it the best idea. You share. What what if? What if they make an announcement before Spider Man comes out? Like by the way. It's A, it's either a timed exclusive, or B, it's not an exclusive anymore. How mad are people going to get that have bought PS5s over Xboxes specifically for Spider-Man? Or bought a copy of that game on that console I mean, because of Spider-Man? I mean, console if that's your reason, gonna... you kind of deserve it, not going to lie. Console Warrior's going <laughs> to Console Warrior. 
That's the right answer, Mesa. As well. <laughs> if your reason for that is that, well, you said there's some. I, I mean, you bought a PS5 because you just wanted a PS5, but um, there's a lot of people, inclu- I guess, including you, if you want to do that, that specifically got the PS5 version, like even over the PC, because of Spider-Man. Yeah, yeah, true. Yeah. I'm actually really happy with the console version, though. That's because, I don't know, I like PC gaming, I like playing on PC, but you know. it's not like it's not just like sitting down and playing on a console. Don't say I don't I, know. I, I, know. I prefer sitting at a desk, but I'm glad I paid a grand total of zero for my copy, because it just came with the, uh, I think the processor. Yeah, I, oh. I because, of a, because of a work thing, I ended up getting it two for PC, so. Oh, when you were building computers? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, I don't have much to say on Avengers. I'm I'm pretty down on it to be honest. I don't want to bring the the mood down. No, it's fine. I'm having fun. That's all that matters. That's to all me, that matters. Least. That's all that matters in life in general. If Mace is having a good time, <laughs> that that's what I tell myself when I'm feeling down. <laughs> <laughs> um, is let's it, go is to it like is it Anthem two? Though I guess. Oh God. I don't think so because I think Avengers can pull itself out of the. I think I now the window is definitely tightening. I definitely, but I think there is still a world where they're able to 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 pull up. I don't think there was any universe that Anthem could have pulled up. Oh, of course not. I mean, to, yeah, the, the, granted, it's the power of the IP, but at least Avengers uh, has a personality. <laughs> yeah, Anthem is just like there. It is weird how they have that there, because I'll never forget like when people the fucking statement about like how Cap the the the, the likenesses that all look really weird. Oh and yeah, the fact that Captain America looks like he calls black people the N word on, <laughs> on weekends. <laughs> he he, lo- I, I, I so hate to say up. it, but it's like the design looks like a dude that we've seen like hanging outside of Home Depot. <laughs> It's it's uh, it's relevant if it's relevant if you've been watching uh, Falcon and Winter yeah, Soldier. I'm say, that's... <laughs> yeah, I've, I've seen I've seen I saw an article posted about how oh, like God. how how the ham fisted uh, racial element like to that like both is what we need but is also not like even close to what we need or something i i just saw a title written by it. There's someone, I but... I mean I actually actually am surprised from Winter Soldier. Uh, Falcon and Winter Soldier, because there is a lot of ham-fisted stuff, and there's actually a lot of subtle stuff that I wasn't expecting That's good. from I this just, show. So. I, I just want I Bucky and you. Sam to get along. I want them to be friends. Me well, as long as, Captain, as long as that Captain America is on screen, they're friends. I, I will say, Sam is... He, he's... Okay, from an outside perspective, Sam's funny. He's witty. He is kind of unnecessarily a dick. He's, he's having fun with the boy. Come on. <laughs> it's like, it's a hey man. If I, if, if I had a camera on how I talk to some of my friends, it wouldn't look very great, okay? <laughs> There's always that one person in the group. Sorry, Bucky. Yeah. Oof. God. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Mm. Um, let's go ahead and move on over to. Uh, since we, since we don't have the ghost of Mesa, since we have Mesa incarnate, um, hey. let's talk about Days what? Gone. Wait, oh, yay! <laughs> uh, ben Studios has announced that the PlayStation Four exclusive will be making its way to PC this spring via Steam and the Epic Game Store. This is the second big PlayStation exclusive to make its way to PC store for us, with the first being Guerrilla Games' uh, Horizon Zero Dawn. Uh, Days Gone is set to support unlocked frame rates, ultra wide monitor support, improved graphical detail, field of view options, and foliage draw distances. Uh, PlayStation CEO Jim Ryan, the guy we mentioned earlier, <laughs> uh, stated that a plethora of first party Sony titles will be making their way to PC, and that Days Gone marks the start of this con. Not con-, con- yeah, I can't talk! <laughs> of this concerted initiative. <laughs> Uh, Ryan went forth in a, in a series of interviews to say that Horizon 2 Forbidden West will be releasing this year. Uh, Hooray. Anything so, that allows more Russian gamers to play that game, because they'll appreciate it way more than any Western person can. <laughs> I, I think we talked about it at like the top of the show, but yeah, I think Days Gone 
Fuck, I'm still struggling to talk about it. It's not great. It's not bad. It's not good. It is like the perfect amalgamation of an open world triple A ass triple A video game. And like, yeah, because there's uh, uh, like at face value, there's nothing special about Mm -hmm. it, but it just works. Like it's it's just it's it's a good time. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. It's the game. It's the game that they're playing on TV. And I think. uh, to go into the PC angle for this, I think it makes sense for Sony to bring this stuff after the fact because, as with any game, the overwhelming majority of sales are made at launch within that first two-week window. And obviously, Steam has proven that uh, discounted sales can lead to games kind of resurging. And then, oh, yeah. the, of, cor- of course, there's also going to be outlier cases like fucking Among Us blown up out of fucking nowhere. But typically, the majority of sales are within that first two-week window. So it's mm-hmm. at no loss to them whatsoever on a business side to release these on PC because they've already made the sales. Um, they don't need to worry about having those exclusive in order to draw people to that hardware because that job's already been done. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it's um, the Horizon Zero Dawn port was not great at launch and it was kind of left in a kind of poor state. Apparently it's good now. At least that's what Dio um, was telling me a while ago. I believe... Uh... It, I, what's the studio name now? Is it Koji Pro again? Or it, it that studio helped them put it together, I believe, or mm-hmm. fix it up rather. Oh yeah, that makes sense. They're both using the same engine, so. But yeah. um, yeah. Ultimately, yeah. I think it's yeah. it's it's basically just a net benefit for for people on PC. Like, I'll if if it's on sale, I might wind up grabbing it again just because it's going to run better. It's going to play better on there. Um, yeah, I've I don't know why anyone would have an issue with it, but I th- I think it's ultimately a, a good thing. And I, I I don't think they're gonna go like day one whatsoever, like how Xbox is doing it. But it's good for mm-hmm. people that don't want to buy a Sony console or they just want to double dip. Yeah, I'll definitely get it at some point. Um mm-hmm. it's a game I'm, that does not end. I'm I, a fan of zombie stuff in general, for better and for worse. For good and for schlock. Um so I'll check it out at some point. I uh, excuse been, me, like, they're not zombies, dude. they're freakers, God. Oh hush! Totally different. Yeah. I swear. Hope you like, I hope you like um, Darth Maul, uh, Star Killer from The Force Unleashed, or the the white supremacist Richard Richard Spencer uh, analog from Supergirl, because um, <laughs> he's great in it. He's uh, in Supergirl as a Richard yeah. Spencer analog. Yeah, no, because I like that actor. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, I actually so like that actor. Holy I've watched shit. way too much Supergirl. Ooh. I because do too. I like trash. Oh, don't get me started on liking trash. I've been watching uh, High Rise Invasion, and it's oh, it's bad. Can't stop watching it though. Star <laughs> Star Star Killers like my favorite extended universe Star Wars character. And that you game is know. another He's capital ch- F fine game. That's it's, I love it. Eh, 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 it's a little repetitive. It's a little repetitive. Ooh. It's a little fine. repetitive. I do. The yeah. level where the you story is fine. and it's wonderful. I, I the story is like, fine. I do like I do like the the, the 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 force analog of of the dark side game being this you know wannabe character action like hack and slash game, and the and the light side is this wannabe dark so slow and methodical game. I like that um dichotomy. I think that's fun. Mm. Um, going back to one point, I guess I kind of went over it a little bit. Um, can we talk about how fucking ridiculous it is? Ridiculous. Uh, f- first of all, fuck console wars. Fuck anyone that participates. Um, I, I don't care about that shit whatsoever. Um, I think it's ridiculous for people to be mad that other people have a chance to play a game that they like. Like this yeah, does not impact yeah, you in the slightest. That's mm-hmm. utter. Like seriously, when they when they announced that Kingdom Hearts was like coming to PC, I was fucking ecstatic because I have so many friends who would wanting to play that series who don't have consoles and i'm like finally (laughs) it's like i was saying before when i was joking about the avengers thing it's like you should you people have a right to be upset about that issue specifically like basically because they were told it's only going to be on this and then haha no it's going to be on everything but the but the person you should focus your anger on is not the people who now get to play this game because then you're just playing into the same bullshit that you were already playing into you're already saying oh the companies it's not their fault it's 
they're bad because now other people can play my special game that I bought because I'm special. The fact mm-hmm. of it is, no, you should be mad that the company's tricked you, like they keep tricking you into buying something, thinking, spending more money on something maybe instead of waiting or instead of like getting something on a console you're more familiar with because of that. I can maybe, I, I can see that to a certain degree. Where if uh, you buy into hardware with like the promise, like this is the only place that you can play it, so you're gonna have to buy this hardware, and then whatever exactly. duration it, it comes out, and it's just not the case. But I, I can yeah. see that to an extent. Um, Mesa, bef- before we we cap off on Days Gone, uh, do can we have an appreciation thread right here of uh, Boozer and our boy Boozer? Schizo? Boozer and there's Schizo. no, there's no, hey, it's a, hey, it's a Schizo's over party, all right. No one talk, we don't care about Schizo, all right. It's all he, about the booze man, he, even right? by even by the name of Schizo, you're like, this guy's a piece of shit. And he, he, you gotta, like, he there's chose characters to that be you called Schizo, th- th- it, that that's what makes you, it worse. <laughs> I mean, is there everything about him? Is there, uh, is there any, is there any character in that game that's not eventually a piece of shit? Because I've heard that everyone's kind of just, terrible yeah. That game. Do dogs count? Yes. I mean... The dog is pretty okay. Boozer's okay. good. Come on, Boozer's good. They, no, no, they, had, what they had some stuff in the past. Well, good. I, was, I, was, I think I was talking past. about this before we started the game. But They're a biker gang. The, the conversation tonight, the COD podcast. But I, from what I had heard is that there are story elements that seem as though they were going to be like maybe different paths you could go down, like choices you could make that in the final release of the game, you end up just going down a strict, not a strict, a strict narrative. It's it's a planned out narrative. And some things seem almost like they don't line up with the way things were going earlier in the game, as if maybe you were going to be able to like be a different kind of deacon at, a mm-hmm. t- at, a, at some point in development. That is just something I've heard described. I don't know because I haven't played the game myself. But I'm excited to experience that because I like finding yeah. shit like that in games. Also, the, also, yeah, that game is weird. It, like, it has everything e- in it. Even like a, if what feels like a DLC expansion, it has inside of it. That game is humongous. Mm-hmm. I I would highly recommend Days Gone to anyone that basically likes uh, zombie games or like open world, just because it like hits every single check mark for both of those mm-hmm. uh, genres. Um, maybe cash it on a sale. I think I got it for twenty bucks. Like not even a year after isn't it came it, out. It goes on sale. Isn't it, it, isn't it a part of the uh, PlayStation Plus Gold? It is. So you can so if, if you buy it, if you have if you buy a PS Five, if, if you, you buy a PS Five, you have it. Yeah. Oh shit! I didn't know that. Yeah, go. For yeah. It. And there's no time on that, right? Those are just games that they're going to be. I believe away. there's yeah. not. I believe there's not time on that. No. Yeah, yeah. I don't think it's time. I. Uh, I'll be real. Sony when I get a PS5 like, someday, that's going to be the time I actually play Persona Five, <laughs> or because I don't care otherwise. I like the gameplay of that game. Yeah, and, uh, wait, 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 Blaine. S- small correction on that. Please play the Royal version. Yeah, it is so it much better. Money? Yes. Uh, but I'm probably not going uh, yeah, to. Royal, Royal's would, very weirdly not a part of that collection. I, I would say it's um, your, your time is more valuable in that scenario, and those games are very long. Here, Jose, I, let's I, put it I, this way. I will, I'm not playing will, this game because I think I'm going to. Enjoy. <laughs> I know I, that there's gameplay elements that are better, but. I, I will literally pay for you to play Royal instead of the base oh version. God. It's okay, funny. Someday, uh, Someday you can buy me a copy, all right? My well, birthday is on that. January 9th. Next year, if you want, maybe. Maybe so, I'll let um, you buy it for me. So when I, so when, so when Persona Five first came out, I had a, I, had, I bought a, I had a old PS3, and so I actually rented Persona Five from GameFly, and I basically treated it as like a reverse job. So the longer I took in the game, the more money I lost. So I had to play it relatively quickly. Oh no. Uh, um, uh, I mean, that's, yeah, that's like, like, like that's the, like a bare like minimum play. of like a hundred hours. Like even if no, you're like trying to mainline first, it. My first playthrough took literally a hundred and nine hours, and I yeah. almost failed one of my finals in college. <laughs> my, because my, my thirty-five hours in all I did. doesn't seem like that much right now. That's yeah, all um, I did. Yeah, like, but like, yeah, because I've also been playing um, SMT3 Nocturne on the side. So I was I played that first and then played Persona Five and I was like, oh yeah, this is pretty fun. And then when you gave me 
the the Vita for Persona Four, and I tried that for the first time. I was like, oh, this isn't <laughs> this isn't that. <laughs> does, does SMT have anything to do with Shin Megami Tensei? By the way, uh, no, it has are, more are to do with um. <laughs> What's it called again? I messed up. I messed up. Oh, so you couldn't do it twice. Uh, Pokemon Mirage Sessions. Got it. Damn it. Uh, <laughs> Thanks for uh, calling me out on that, Blaine. <laughs> uh, Genki Ibon Roku Sharp Fe. Yeah. Um, uh, let's, let's I actually see. do want to play the SMT games because I've heard those are unanimously mm-hmm. those are just good games. Nocturne is hella good. I want to get that Switch port. The, that comes out. Yeah, the Switch port comes out in June, June or May. Yeah, since, yeah it sounds like they've really fit. They've really uh, fixed a lot of those issues that was in the Japanese release. And Dante's so, going to be DLC, yeah. right? Uh, Dante's no, DLC, I, I believe. Yeah. So yeah. Oh, yeah, I'll be getting yeah, featuring, no, featuring Dante yeah. from the Devil May Cry series. It's the um, because yeah, normally it's Raido Kuzanoha, and then they and then he and um, I forget his name partnered, so that um, in in DMC two, uh, the guy who designs um, uh, SMT designed the Devil Triggers, in a, in oh, DMC two, cool. yeah. Man, DMC in the worst one. designs were actually pretty cool. It sucks that that game's. I wish, I wish the game good. was good. It's not even yeah. that. Oh man, that's a, that's a whole long ass conversation we could have. Uh, Sarah, do you want to go ahead and lead us into uh, what you've been playing? Yeah. So, um, I I finally started the Outriders demo, and uh, yeah, I get what you guys were saying. The first hour was like super incredibly serious. I was like. Like this doesn't feel like a people can fly game. What is this? And then like I hit a point. Mass Effect. <laughs> yeah, but it's like, but it's like I actually enjoyed the like character designs and stuff because it was so like rugged and like yeah. just like out there. And I was like, okay, I'm actually digging this. And then I did the uh, opening quest of when your character. I mean, it's not a spoiler because it's out of when your character uh, gets struck by the electrical storm and you get, like, chucked into cryo, just like, oh, bye, you wake up in, like, 87, like, 37 years from, from, from now, yeah. and, um, I ended up going with, uh, oh, and then I went through the, was it, was it the Tunnel of Death? Was that what it was called? The, the, I don't like, know. The, it, 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 <laughs> it, it, you're being driven oh, through a bunch of man. dead bodies, and it's just like, welcome to the weird apocalypse. <laughs> and I was like, okay, now I'm getting more bullet storm vibes, now I'm like, now I'm like getting there. And then I, um, and then I, so I end up playing trickster class because being able to explode people's bones is a lot of fun. <laughs> and, um, yeah, I, I hit this point where I froze an entire area and I was able to slice, I think, seven enemies at once. And mm. all of them just exploded one after one another. And I just had this giant, stupid grin on my face. And I was just like, fuck yes. Like, it just, that was when it hit. And I was like, okay, this is going to be a lot of fun. It feels pretty um, good to play. I'm it does. Lie. Like, I mean, I do have a couple issues. Yeah, I have a couple issues with the difficulty. Like, I, I was I was playing on Story World 1, and I was fucking struggling. Like, I, I was getting close to death. I would barely save myself with my melee and the sword sweep, which, mm. which refilled health. So I switched it down to just easy story mode. I think it was called Story Story World. Uh, uh, which is whatever the first one is. You start. Yeah, because it doesn't even look like there's much of a difference. So I was just like, okay, well, much of a difference in like unlocks and stuff and yeah. stuff like that. Um, like my only issue so far has been the difficulty. Also, there was a glitch when I tried to match make with like a random person to try the co-op. And it's like, oh, matchmake with someone who's at the same story m- mission that you are. And it was to go save your, like, really old friend, Jacob, who I love that man, too. Um, That's where I stopped playing is when that mission starts. Yeah, so it ended up glitching me and sending me back to the mission before that. So I had to redo that mission all over again. And there was, seemed to be a lot of lag between me and the person I was playing with. So that kind of annoyed me. So I ended up just doing the rest of it solo. But, like, I'm enjoying myself. I'm so glad that game is coming out on Game Pass. Because, honestly, I would have bought it anyway. But the fact that it's coming out on Game Pass so I could get it, like, technically for free. And I already have yeah. it pre-downloaded is, like, even better. 
Because that game's a lot oh, of fun. Is, is pre-download already available for? Game uh, game? through 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 the Game Pass app. Okay, because I went on Xbox and I didn't see the option, but I'll see if I can do it again. Yeah, uh, I enjoyed myself. Uh, it's it's a people can fly game. Uh, I think I figured that out when your character blasts through a door in a cutscene and she just walked in and went, I forgot to knock in this like really dumb like I have superpowers fashion. And I was like, mm-hmm. okay, yeah, this is a this is a people can fly game. <laughs> uh, uh, question for you. So uh, for those that don't know, for the Outriders demo, anything that you do in there, your progression does yeah, carry over when you do p- awesome. when you play the More base demos game. More need, need to do that. <laughs> uh, but question for that, is it weird yes. that, so I still have it uh, sitting on my desktop, the uh, icon, whatever. Is it weird that I don't want to play the demo so I can just play it as like one continuous thing versus having to wait for release? Well, am I just weird for that? So from what it no. looks like, the, the, the so like it's not it's not weird. No, the one thing that interested me is, is that it looks like there's a lot of stuff to do in the demo. And like the good news is it's not one of those demos that like doesn't tell you how far you can get, and then just places up an invisible wall. Like they like they tell you from the beginning after you finish the opening quest. They're like, hey, we know that this is a demo. They specifically tell you how much you can do what world level you can you can get to what character level that it stops you at which i found incredibly helpful was that it lets you know it was very open on hey this is how much you can do this is when we're going to stop you but other than that go nuts like i found that really really cool i was definitely interested in the fact that they let you know like right away how much you can do um, I'm not planning on getting super far. I'm going to play maybe a little bit tonight and then that's it because I got farther in Persona 5 Strikers, which I really want to talk about. Um, but, uh, yeah, that's a lot of fun. Um, I'm going to play that game co-op with, uh, with my partner. Um, but I want to talk about Persona 5 Strikers because Persona is doing something that I think Persona should have done a very long time ago. And like, yeah, Persona 5 does this like a little bit. But, um, and I don't, it's going to be so hard not to spoil this because this game has been out for like a month and a half now, but the part that I'm at is incredibly spoilery. And I talked to Blaine about it. I was about to say, are we talking about what I think? Yeah. Yeah. Um, Yeah. So like. Yeah. That's my, like my next month game too. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. I'm not going to say anything, but just what Persona 5 Strikers does, which is not something I thought Persona would like ever do. And it was legitimately really fucking awesome. Okay, so I legitimately don't know anything about this. Can you like vaguely hint? So like, there's what this a might new be? character in Persona Five Strikers. So so it, for people who don't know, Strikers is Persona Five Point Two. It's literally the sequel to Persona Five. Like it takes place a year after Persona Five does. So like yes, it's a Muso game kind of sorta, but it's 100% the canon sequel to P Five. So if you want to know like where that story goes after that, you want to play Strikers. Um, um, quick follow-up question: Is does it following up on Persona Five Royal? No, that's the weird thing. It does not follow up on Royal. So okay. characters, <laughs> yeah, it's weird. So like characters um, in Royal don't show up. This is base Persona Five. I think that's, that's weird. Sumerizes my disdain for it. That's weird because that's like. Exactly contrary to what they said when when Royal was coming out was that the that Strikers was a sequel to Royal and not Persona Five. Yeah, that main so. chick. Yeah, that main chick that's revealed in Royal. She has not shown mm. up as far as I can tell, and I think I'm halfway through it. Or yeah. like just, Persona just near team the end. Is leading their fans. The right? what I've heard, no, from what I've heard about Royal, it wouldn't make sense for her to show up. But anyway. Well, there, like, there's other not, spoilers we should avoid from. Yeah, so. yeah, she's. I mean, as far as I am, she hasn't been mentioned. So, mm-hmm. and that's the weird part know. to me. Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, um, <laughs> but like, yeah, like, pers- uh, something happens with the new character that's revealed. His name is Zen Kiji. Um, there's something happens with him that uh, something I never thought Persona would do, and it's just how it goes about doing it is so incredibly badass, and is just like. It's like it had again. It had this. It had this. It had me having this big dumb stupid grin on my face the whole time that it was happening. And like I again, I talked to Blaine about it. Blaine knows what I'm talking about. 
Look down, look down, don't look them in the <laughs> eye. That's 100% like an actual like, reference to what happened. It's a fucking nuts. Like, I I know Persona 5 did, did some crazy fucking shit, but Strikers, like, pushes this up to fucking 12. Like, they were like, oh, all the stuff we couldn't do in, like, P5 or, like, P5 or Royal? We're doing that shit now, boys. Like it is, it is so fucking cool. Like I was, I'm still losing my mind over it. Like I had to stop playing because it was really late. But like I am, like I'm so excited to see where the story goes now. Because at first I'm like, oh, is this gonna rehash Persona Five? But then it took that like right turn, and I'm like, fuck yes. <laughs> like it is, it is the coolest damn thing ever. And uh, also one of my favorite Persona designs. I'm I'm just gonna say it now. It gives me one of my new favorite personas ever, just for the sheer audacity of it. <laughs> Which I'm super hyped for like for Mesa for like you to get to that point. Is it even <laughs> more out there than Dominatrix Banana? Oh, it's even more out there than a Dominatrix Banana. <laughs> it was uh... it was when I found out what it what it was, it was that why does that name sound so uh, I was like, motherfuckers. When are we going to have the game session episode where I just talk about how it's weird that the Persona team just wants to fuck kids? Yeah, that's also incredibly... I mean, you'd, you would probably have to expand that to fans like going very overly yeah. seriously into like, oh, who's your waifu? Yeah. There's like, a lot of... You brought up Dominatrix Bananas. A lot of, that's why, a lot of, why would you make a teenager a Dominatrix bananas. in another world? There's well, a no, they bit of a, a different... Dominatrix as a best friend in another world. Yeah, it's a different <laughs> context. That okay, I, I, I may not have played a lot of Persona, but Chia Satonaka, whatever the Chia's fucking otherworld like evil Persona turns into a weird dominatrix banana woman. It is all mm, fucked yes. up, and I'm like, this is like a 14 to 15 year old girl that you're doing this. It's symbolic, though. It's the, symbolic. <laughs> <laughs> the one yes, thing. Thank you, boy. <laughs> <laughs> the one thing I will say about Persona 5 Strikers was I don't I'm not a Muso person and I didn't know if I would like it because of that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just Persona 5. The combat's like Muso style combat, but it still has Persona 5 like um what's the word? So like you still have uh ele elemental advantages versus dis dis uh -huh. Yeah, they, they translated the press turn system <laughs> they, to Muso. Yeah, they really translated it fucking well. And when you're outside of the battle system, it's just Persona 5. Like, it's Persona 5 with, like, better movement and the ability to switch characters on on, on the fly. Would yeah, that, be, feeling, would, would that yeah, be a negative for you, Mesa? Because you said you don't enjoy the social aspects of the Persona games, right? And there is none uh, of that in there. Yep, as I was about to say, yep. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, and I was when I played the demo, I started feeling hella nostalgic for the game too. It's, me too. Like I, uh, I, I didn't realize how much I missed those kids until I mm -hmm. played it. I was like, oh my god, I miss these characters. I love these characters. And the one thing that I will say, they replace the social aspects with very long cutscenes. Like there's some cutscenes that go on for like eight to nine minutes. And thankfully, there's like an auto button. So if you just want to like be on your phone for some of it, you can like let it auto go through. But like the cutscenes are incredibly long in this. And I don't know if it's or maybe they were just long in Persona 5 and I forgot about it. But like there was there was a couple times when, when I when I would just like sit there and I'd be like, when am I going to get to the dungeons? <laughs> when am I going to get to the game? Because I just wouldn't. And it's like, I don't mind the story. I love P5 story and characters and everything else especially this one one of my favorite like newer persona characters in this in this one but it's like it's just yeah they were they replaced the like social aspect of it i mean you have these things called requests which are like very optional things you can do in dungeons and like and the and the open worlds like sometimes you'll get a request for like ryuji's like yo bro i want to try this ramen really really bad and you need to find the ramen for him and then you get like a special upgrade to your uh to your uh battle system or to your party but then there's others where it's like oh uh sophie wants this really specific item so that she can study it it tells you the dungeon that it's in and it tells you where the enemy is that's going to have that item but it forces you to have to keep jumping back and forth so it's so and, and it's like you don't have to do them they're completely optional 
but I found that I was kind of forced to do some because some unlocked better weapons in the shop, better armor in the shop, upgraded like uh your uh your like phantom thief ranking, which allows you to get these like separate upgrades. So it's like it's not it's a persona game, but it's also a persona it's like eighty nine percent persona, eleven percent so. If that makes mm, that's, sense. To that's exactly how I felt about it when I played the demo. Yeah. yeah. Um, don't play it on Switch. It looks like utter ass on the Switch. I've heard a p- yeah. from a friend from SDGC. Apparently, don't play the PC version. It deleted his save, and he was a decent I didn't portion. I know there was a PC version. Apparently, yeah. There is. I am. I'm playing it on PlayStation Five because even though it doesn't have any like base upgrades to it, it does run at 60 F- FPS. On nice. the PlayStation 5. So that's where I'm playing it. It's really fun. I'm enjoying the shit out of it. I can't wait to, especially after what I just recently witnessed. I'm so excited to continue going going through it. Um, I'm playing more WoW, obviously, because it's World of Warcraft. But I also picked up Monster Hunter Rise on the Switch. I haven't touched Yay. it yet. Woo, but I, I have. I'm on the- Mesa, can you please play, play with me? Because I feel like I'm going to not have a fun time if I'm playing oh, by myself. Yeah, I couldn't. I couldn't get the physical, and Target was having a uh, buy one get one fifteen percent off on like uh, right. on like uh, cards. So I got like sixty bucks in Switch cash. <laughs> I just call it Switch 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 bucks. Nintendo so like funny money. In Switch bucks. Yeah, funny and money. <laughs> I and I picked it up. Uh, so I'm just gonna give it a shot. I've never played a Monster Hunter game. Uh, mm. I have World. I have World downloaded mm. on my X- Xbox because it was on Game Pass. So I'm gonna try that first and see how I like it, but I'm definitely gonna need people to play Rise with. Okay, I, I can explain some systems for you. Thank I you. Can, I would greatly I can play World with you uh, while you're testing that out. I would um, love I actually it. I haven't touched you. it in a while. And Thank you. I never because because I brought it up to my partner. I was like, "Hey, I'm gonna get Monster Hunter Rise," and he goes, "And he goes, I'm the wrong person to ask. I do not like that franchise." <laughs> he was he just was upfront. He's like, <laughs> "No." I'm like, "Well, good to know ahead of time." I'll, I'll play Warcraft with you, but yeah, Monster Hunter is just not my jam. Yeah, Glad you I like though. Figured, I figured I'd give it a shot because I've never played it, and back when World came out, I was still at GameStop, and all of my coworkers were playing it and were addicted to it, and I did not touch it. <laughs> so, I'll be so I figured it at some I'd point in the next few weeks. Yeah. Um, I got a I'd friend is actually giving me he has an extra copy, so he's gonna sell me his for like forty bucks. Uh, yeah. Also, I played Project Eva till twelve thirty in the morning yesterday. <laughs> And I, I and my eyes hurt this morning. So not at all yeah. shocked. <laughs> That's how I, I saw you that. tweeting about it. How they keep adding songs to it, and you're just like, "Let me free." <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's basically it. They like so basically what really really fast. What they did is they asked fans what songs from old Project Diva games that they wanted in uh, Project Diva Mega Mix on the Switch, and they pretty much added all of all of them. Which means there was a thirty dollar pack that had like fifty or so songs in it. So I bought it all, and it's awesome. My favorite tracks ever, favorite like Vocaloid tracks ever. Wait, and the and one you're like, playing is the one on the Switch, or it's the the yes. stuff on the Switch was okay. So now the Switch has pretty much everything you it needed. Close to everything, yes. Really? Um, so that might become the definitive one because you told yes. me the PS4 one was the definitive for a while. Yeah, the PS4 was the definitive for a while. Um, the the Switch is now I'm gonna say as a Project Diva person, close to definitive. Playing on the Switch is still very funky because you have three options. You have motion controls, which sucks. Do not use it. You have right. normal buttons, and like the Switch buttons, and you have touch touchscreen option on it, which is personally how I play it because touchscreen allows you to like do faster combos and 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 stuff because it's just like oh, I would do that. And the buttons can sometimes be yeah. Um, so I'm playing. I'm back to playing that because I can't escape the cyclical Miku hell. <laughs> I can never leave. I can never leave. Um, Let's see. We got we, we to gotta get yeah, wrapping I, pretty soon. No. Does um, anyone have, have anything to. else they, they need to touch up on? Um, I could talk about video games. What are those? <laughs> I don't know. I hear they're pretty cool, though. Um, I, I've just been playing, like... I've been making my way through Final Fantasy X. Um, remembering things I both do... Something I will say, Final Fantasy X has aged a lot better than I expected it to. Um, a lot of things <sighs> that I thought were stupid when I was a teenager, as an adult, are actually hitting me in really different ways. 
Like, mm-hmm. everyone loves to make fun of the laughing scene. Like, oh, it's so stupid. But when you actually play it and examine it as, like, not an emotionally damaged adult, but, like, an adult who's dealt with having to hide your true emotions and fight through depression, that scene actually hits really close to home and what it's like to force yourself to be happy, but to make the point that you can't force yourself to be happy. It's still awkward to listen to, but and there are voice acting issues in general, but it, I would almost argue that it's not nearly as bad as it used to be made out to be, and is sometimes still made out to be. Also, um... The stuff with Waka actually, while it does lack nuance, adds a lot more to the story than I remember it adding. Because in this version, while I'm not going to say that uh, that Titus was light-skinned in the original game, because he was not, but I think the fact that they updated the models to better reflect, I guess, the concept art and shit like that, and you have less of that whole Kingdom Hearts face thing going on, when you see that Titus, who is a man of kind of darker skin tone, and Waka, a man of even darker skin tone, having these conversations about one being like, well, that's just Albed bullshit, and the other guy being like, man, do you even realize what you're saying? Like, while it is definitely, again, while it needs, there's work that needs to be done, I love your girlfriend's shirt, sorry. Um, Blaine says she loves her shirt. Technically, that's my shirt. <laughs> well, I love both of your shirts. Um... But yeah, no, um, I mean, there, there's something there about, like, being manipulated by an authoritarian uh, church, like, monarchy weird thing. And I also enjoy a good, I, I enjoy a story that's all about pretty much, like, hey, we gotta go kill God now. Which, from what I remember, from what I remember being told, that is what Final Fantasy X's story eventually becomes. Just literally killing God. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. I've just been yeah. playing that, um... I'm going to play the demo for Monster Hunter Rise tonight, probably. I want to beat Final uh, Final Fantasy. I want to beat Yakuza 7 soon. I don't know how soon, Mm -hmm. but soon. And I'm waiting here for Nier to eventually ship to me. Me too. Me too. (laughs) Me too. It is is Nier. It is Nier. Square just took our fucking money, so it should. Mesa. Would you like yeah. to add anything as far as what you've been playing or any other stuff? Well, uh, well I've been playing Rhymes. It's been a lot of fun. Um, it's it's um, it's a lot of the um, it's a lot of the changes that they made to world, mm-hmm. but in the lens of the old style, and it it it, it, it works really really well. Um, if the only Monster Hunter games I've played were I played the demo for try on the Wii and I played mm-hmm. the demo for four on the three DS. Mm-hmm. And I've played World, uh not extensively. I don't think I ever beat the base game, but I got pretty close. Um mm-hmm. do you think it will be difficult or easy for me to kinda uh slip into Rise and kind of feel things out? It should be pre- it should be fairly easy. It's it, at first, it's gonna feel a lot like um, what you understand world to feel like, and then as the systems um, evolve and like think and the barriers start falling around, it's gonna start feeling a lot like the older style. Mm-hmm. So more and like, like it, four and what I remember, what we remember, yeah. three and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, um, oh, and the one thing is really, it's really hard to mentally get over the fact that you can just kind of climb any wall. Um, oh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, that's Breath I, of the Wild right there. That's, I'm I mean, excited for that. Yeah, and like there's a, there's been times when I'm like on top of this tall thing, and I'm thinking like, how am I supposed to get up if I fall again? I'm like, oh right, just climb it, right? So yeah, the game the game's a lot of fun. Um, yeah, uh, probably will if I if I have time this week, I might start uh, Last of Us Two. Still holding out uh, on that PS5 update, aren't you? I, th- I, think, I think it's time to I think it's time to give up and just 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 move on with the game. Just finish it and move on. Um, <laughs> uh, let's see. I beat Rise. I mean, I beat um Phoenix Rising, Immortals Phoenix Rising. Um, it's an okay game. It's really really easy. Um, I'm always surprised how easy the game is. Um, I still have to finish um, that. I actually found it really fun. I have I found it incredibly oh yeah. calming. Like, oh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> I just whenever I fight like, a boss, I'm always 
I'm always surprised with how much damage my attack does to yeah. it. Like, oh, right, right, yeah. But yeah, like it's like, I, and I'm glad that you agree. Like it's so incredibly calming, and Absolutely. it's just, it's just like it's just a nice, fun. Like a lot of the dialogue makes me like giggle, and like and like a lot of it just makes yeah, me a like, lot of a laugh. lot. Of, most of the dialogue is really cute and fun. Yeah, like it's um, just like it's so weird. It's not bad weird to see that come out of Ubisoft, but I want more stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. It's, it's just like it's such like a fun time, and it's I'm like oh to man. Get, I'm hoping to get like the the season pass on like a discount because I really want to actually try a lot of them. Yeah, and did um, the new DLC just come out? The Where's second the one just came out. I'm yeah. sorry, season yeah. pass for what? I completely uh, associated Immortals with Phoenix Rising. Oh, okay, okay. We're st- yeah, yeah. Oh. So the first one is a, is a, is a pseudo like a, like a, like an epilogue to the game. The second oh, one okay. is a completely different character in the is set in like um with Chinese mythology, and then the third one's going to be back in Greece with again a, n- a completely new character. I love that shit. That stuff's mm-hmm. so cool. Like I'm so sad yeah. that that game flew under a bunch of people's radars. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I'm glad people. I'm glad it's there for people to enjoy, even if it's not like something I'm super interested in. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I didn't think I was interested in it either, and I played it, and I said, oh, fuck, I'm addicted. <laughs> um, so, yeah, that's, um, uh, my, my, um, end of, my end of year, um, um, uh, run through games is going a little bit slower this year than it did last year, because at this point I finished, um, the, uh, um, Days Gone, uh, uh, Dead Rising, not Dead Rising, um, Death Stranding, and, um, uh, another game I can't remember, but um, everything's going pretty well. Yeah, uh, enjoy games. Nice. I play fighting games; they're fun. Uh, support your locals and all that. I'm gonna need some um. some some verification on that. I don't. I've never had fun playing a fighting. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Sir, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna have to see your see, your your. You report. press the button, and then they get hit by it, and then you had fun. <laughs> You learn um, how to do an assist in Skullgirls, and all of a sudden you're like, oh man, this is it. This is the good yeah, shit. Yeah, Skullgirls too big brain for me. I think nah. um, I think the only thing I'll add in, since I gotta get going right about now, um, I got very mad at World of Warcraft, because I'm just like, oh no, I beat the campaign, now it's just all grinding. I'm just like, ah, oh, this is fucking lame. I should be playing some other shit. So I uninstalled, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm not playing it anymore. And then you reinstalled! And then I started doing all the world quests. I'm slowly progressing. Now I'm just like, oh no, no, I'm going to be able to do the raid soon. I'm just like, honey, no. I'll do it with you. I'm incredibly over. I I am playing on my alliance character too. So So I am going to help you. Yeah. I'm disappointed in myself. I'm sorry, Blaine. It's okay. I uninstalled in everything and then I reinstalled it the same day because I have my internet's too fast. I wish I had fast internet like that. I don't. Not not for that particular instance. I could have staved it off long. <laughs> but um, I forgive you. <laughs> yeah, that's gonna go ahead and do it for the show. I just want to go ahead and um, shout out my two patrons, Realm and Nomad and Sly. I want to shout out everyone um, in chat, everyone who's viewing, and especially a big thank you to uh, Sarah, Blaine, and Mesa for mm. helping this be a thing. All right. Thank you. Video games. Video games, Video games suck. Ooh. Yeah, they do. <laughs> but um, Video with games that, are a conspiracy. But yeah, with that, go ahead and um, follow everyone here on their socials and watch slash interact with what we put out there. Yeah. All right, we'll see you guys next time. Good night. Bye. Right, see you guys. Bye.